I do want to say, I don't want to take anything away from Xavier Worthy. Breaking the 40 record at the Combine is absolutely nuts. However, a lot of people counting his speed twice. Including the NFL, by the way. No, I know. I know. Look, there is a saying when it comes to combine time, don't count trades twice. If you evaluated a player and you said to yourself, this guy's fast on tape. When he's fast at the combine, don't bump him up more because he's fast. You already knew he's fast. I think a lot of people are counting his speed trait twice, sometimes three times. Now you could say to yourself, there's a difference between being fast and being 4-2-1 fast. And I would agree with you, except here's the problem. I already thought he was extremely fast. The rest of his scouting report struggles to drop sometimes. He's 165 pounds, skinny as a rail, not going to do a ton for you in the blocking game. If you just want him to go long in a Patrick Mahomes offense, Mahomes is going to feed him. All right, this I think it could work, right? I think it could be great. All I'm saying is, wherever you land on Xavier Worthy, we already knew he was fast before the combo. You don't have to act like you're surprised that he's fast now. Welcome to the opening bell of the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. And this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for. We are after the Combine right now. So Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl, all the all-star events, the Combine measurements, all that good stuff is in the books. And here we have it for you good people. A three. Count them. One, two, three round mock draft to encapsulate everything that we have learned, not just in Indianapolis, but really, Connor, over the last two months since draft season truly start, got kicked off when the new year made the turn. I'm excited for this one, man. We did a two-round mock draft already this season, but three. I mean, now we're really starting to build some halls for these teams. We're identifying a lot of team needs, man. I'm really excited for it. Me too. And we tweeted it out. Multiple people were just like, rent's due. Are, are you guys in debt? Like, what happened? Yes. Like, everybody knows our running jokes that the mock drafts keep the lights on for the actual podcast. So a three-rounder, I just told someone we're trying to buy a boat for the podcast right now. Well, summer summer scouting will be on a boat <laughs> this year. If this goes well enough, we'll see if we actually get it done the right way. You brought it up to me in Indy. You're like, you want to just do a three-rounder? And I'm like, I mean, at this point, we, we can easily fill three rounds. This is the best. I'm sure you feel the same way, Trevor, especially – um, you know, being the lead guy at PFF, like feel like I'm in a really good place with a lot of this class at this point. Yeah. But so we'll see if we get further than this one day. Maybe. 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 Three. I, I mean, the, the it's people the are, length. So, I don't think you and I know how at all to keep this under two hours. Yeah, so. it's, not the gir- it's not the girth. You know, it's no. the length that, you know, gives you the problem. Okay, right. There we right. go. Yes. So, look, hey. If you guys, you know, click on this show enough, maybe we'll make enough money to where like we could just buy a big enough yacht to where we can do summer scouting with everybody. We'll all do summer scouting together. It'll be a summer scouting vacation for everybody. Like a a celebrity cruise, but we're not celebrities. (laughs) I mean, yeah, just an added cruise. (laughs) Yeah, 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 there we go. (laughs) Some kind of cruise. I will will say this. I do want to shout this out because it's super cool. I can't remember if I've shouted this out on the pod before. You and I were talking a couple weeks ago and – I was talking about how it was my goal to, at some point this season, have a 100,000 view episode on the show. Like, we we were talking about, like, what's something that, like, everybody would love and that would really hit, like, because that's a really cool milestone. Well, a couple of weeks ago, the wide receiver ranking episode hit 100K. And I just cannot thank you guys enough for that. I didn't know that. that. Dude, it is... I mean, when I saw that, when I saw that 100K on YouTube, like it is insane how much I love y'all and how appreciative we are of you guys coming back every single episode, wow. sharing it, blowing it up. I mean, when you guys comment on the show, when you guys comment on each other's kind of mock drafts and kind of have these conversations going, you have no idea how much that helps the reach of this podcast and us and everybody in the community. It's been so cool to watch us evolve and everything. And I thought this one. Might be our only chance at a 100K view episode, and maybe you guys can do it again. But since we've already done it once, just wanted to say off the top of the show, thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the show. It really means a lot. And I back that up. I had no idea. That's amazing. Obviously, it's something you and I have talked about, really hoping to achieve that one day. We were saying our best shot would be, you know, maybe the final mock draft before the draft this year, because we've, right. we've been, we've been, 
Our goal, honestly, was 20,000 subs by the draft this year, and we're at t- almost 23,000 right now. I know. So I echo all of those things. I, it's rare to say this about the internet, what I'm about to say. I love reading our comment section Dude, on YouTube. So do I. I every com- it's not just the compliments and people enjoying the show, which is really special to see, or they'll shout out some of our individual work you and I do, and that stuff is unbelievable. But it's the conversation, the inside jokes, the yeah, man. It's it's a community, and I think honestly that is really rare on the internet these days. Where if you go on Twitter, every if you can get through the bots and all kinds of you know what on there it's really a cool place it's a really really cool place i between this um it's i don't know it's awesome man i don't really even know what to say i just appreciate everybody that supports this show and allows it to be what it is if this is your first time watching and listening to the nfl stock exchange podcast like connor said Come hang out, man. We love interacting with you guys. A lot of our fans and the people who listen to the show love interacting with each other as well. It's a place to talk draft and a place to have a lot of fun. So let's have a lot of fun. Let's kick this bad boy off. A three-round 2024 NFL mock draft. We will pull up PFF's beautiful mock draft simulator, which has oh, the team needs sleek. updated. I will say this. Just give people a little bit of a disclaimer. The draft ranking order hasn't changed yet as of this mock draft because we're in the process of turning things over from – my ranking slash PFF's rankings to more of a predictive consensus. So oh. the mock draft simulator will run a lot more smoothly compared to what we think is going to happen. Like, for example, you know, I got Jaden Daniels ranked 22nd or something on the big board. And so he doesn't always go in right. the top five where we think he's going to go. So we're kind of in the process of making that switch. So just wanted you guys to be on the lookout for that. Uh, the rankings haven't changed for this one, but it will be soon. After the combine, we'll go through a uh, big ranking change. All right, buddy, what do you want? Odds or evens? Oh, man. Ah. <laughs> I, you, think you, had, we, you had all day to think about this. I know, I really did. And clearly, I didn't use any of that time at all, wisely. Uh, uh, I'll take the evens. Okay. I'll all take right, the so, evens. Because right, I, so, I actually, for once in my life, do want to talk about the Jets at 10. I say for once in my life, like I don't do go. it every day. But there, I, yeah, I feel like I owe it to the true Jets sickos to talk about them at 10. Okay. All right. So I still will call you in for the Bucks at 26. That's Just fine. We, right. we could do that. We could, we could tag it. We, we could, who wants to be a millionaire lifeline in? Right. Um, I'm all right with that. RIP reaches Philbin. So goat. the truly goat. Uh, all right. So true. So the Chicago Bears of a number one. I think one of two things will happen here, Connor, from everything that we heard in Indianapolis. Two. One of two things will happen. I think either Caleb Williams is picked at number one overall. Okay. Hot the Bears, Or they trade down to two with Washington. Because Ooh. I have heard that that is a thing. Now, I'm not saying it's imminent. I'm not saying right. it's a for sure happening. But like we talked about on previous shows, Washington is exploring all options. Yeah, there were recent reports that they were, you know, thinking about trading down. I don't really know if they're going to trade down because they got the opportunity to take a quarterback and they really need one, and I think they're going to make that call. But I do think they are putting together a legitimate proposal to move up to number one. Essentially, they're going to make Chicago say no. So no longer do I think the conversation is Caleb Williams or Justin Fields. Now I think the conversation is Caleb Williams or Drake May slash Jaden Daniels and whatever plethora of picks you're going to get from Washington to move down from one to two, which I think includes another year's first, guys. I'm just being honest with you. So I will stick at number one with Chicago, and I'm going to take Caleb because I think it would probably be a little bit too long of an exercise here with a three-round mock to dig into like trade price and everything. But I did want to shout that out, that a big thing that I heard in Indianapolis is that Washington's going to make a decent push for number one overall to bring the hometown kid home. But here he goes to Chicago one. It makes a ton of sense. It's what I think happens. And I, I agree with you. I bet Washington would love to draft Caleb Williams. I think we have landed you know, back to the point of this dude is – a really great quarterback prospect and the Imagine. true number one quarterback prospect in his own tier. And that when you go through that though, 
why would the Bears pass on him, right? You'd have they'd have to have a really unique view of this quarterback class compared to the consensus. And that's a scary place to be for a franchise that yes, they passed on taking Bryce Young last year, which looks like a great move with the picks they got, but they also passed on taking CJ Stroud last year, who looks right. incredible. So it goes both ways. Uh anyways, number two, Washington. The most likely scenario is that they are here at two. Caleb Williams is gone. I will say, I thought there was almost 0% chance they'd answer the phone on coming out of this pick, Trevor. After I got home from Indy, my mind changed a little bit. I still think it's a little. I still think it's likely they stay here, take a quarterback, new owner, new GM, new coach. It makes sense. I don't think, I think they'll at least see what's out there. If they could just get an insane package and maybe they don't have to move that far back, and maybe there's another quarterback they like. But ultimately, I think this is going to come down to a really interesting debate with their when their coaching staff gets really involved with their scouting staff. Keep in mind, there's a lot of new faces working together, a lot of moving parts. So I think we are really far away from anything being in concrete for this team rankings-wise between Drake May and Jaden Daniels. What I will say is it feels like Jaden Daniels has a lot of steam. Again, I know last part we just talked man. about how it feels like Drake May is back to number two. It, it just the more phone calls I go through and people I see, it's just, you know, like a washing machine. Oh, it, it just keeps going around and around. If it could be this guy, it could be that guy it could be between these two. So to kind of change up the exercise here, I will go with Jaden Daniels, okay. which will which will make this draft kind of take a different route than what you and I are used to. Right. I think it's going to be a really down to the wire debate if they can't get Caleb between Jaden and Drake May. But we haven't gone down this road and I definitely think it's on the table. I agree with you completely. It's I think that it is on the table. And and that's that's kind of crazy to me. Now, I, I will say this full transparency. I don't have. I don't have a good, solid feeling for why Drake May is falling. Right, because oh, it feel, no, it, 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 I heard it, inconsistencies. That's yeah, literally I mean, it. And and I guess you know, even before the combine, even before interviews, I was talking to people who you know know people within league circles very very well, and they were saying, yeah, they just weren't that impressed with the tape. Like they thought yep. it was more inconsistent than they believed it was going yep. to be. They think he's more raw as a player, as a passer, than they thought that they were getting hype wise. So. Maybe there is maybe there is some fire to that smoke uh, of him dropping down the board. Here you have Jaden going number two, which kind of sets up an interesting conversation that we'll continue to have about Drake May here at number three. Because I, I don't know if it's a lock for him to go three. No, I no, I don't think so. Um, and which is crazy to me. Crazy. You've got, to me. You've got these three teams, right? Well, I think we're going to spend a decent amount of time on these th- three teams: Minnesota at eleven, Denver at twelve, Las Vegas at thirteen. In a couple of weeks when the new league year turns over and we get to free agency, I think we figure out a lot more about how desperate one of these three teams are going to be. But I think there's a real chance and there might already be offers out there already. I don't know that for sure, but just the way that people were talking about it, one of these teams I think is going to get extremely aggressive for pick number three. And here's the here's the biggest wild card of it all. If they get to three, I don't even know if it's for Drake May at this point. Like, I think it might be for J.J. McCarthy. Oh, which, man. Yeah. Which, which would be. I crazy. can't sign off on that one, but, right. I, that but I agree. Be- I think I think the way the league is turning, it's gotten more interesting. I like J.J. McCarthy. I want to make that very clear. Like, I, right. I would take J.J. McCarthy in the first round, but trading up multiple picks to go to number three to get him as QB three in this class. Man, it's just a lot of that's that's a lot of expectations on the D- kid. And, Maybe he lives up to it, but do you think we're falling victim in some sense and not us? Because I don't think you and I have started this conversation. We're just kind of watching what, you know, how the tide comes in. We come out of the combine this year. And the first thing when I peel myself out of bed this morning, I don't even think I got up. I think I just grabbed my phone that I saw was a lot of chatter of the four quarterbacks now going in the top five picks and we'll get to the next year quarterbacks, too, that I think could also go round one where I, I at first I was like, yeah, the McCarthy hype is real. And then I also was like, well, 
I remember last year coming out of the combine, we were all convinced four quarterbacks were also going in the top five to six picks, right? And yeah, three of them did. But Will Levis fell all the way to the second round. Yeah, so, Levis Levis is the big time pawn. The big right? time. I, if you ask me today, I think McCarthy's going in the top 15. But I just want to catch myself and be like, man, is this the indie, you know, express where every every quarterback's going to go uh, in our heads and we're falling for it? Or is it, hey, this quarterback class is different? I do lean on the side of the latter, but we've seen this before, how crazy the hype train can go. And then you get to the draft and you're like, whoa, you know, maybe teams weren't that high on the guy. Right, right. Yeah, because Levis... You know, 48 hours before the draft kicked off, his number odds to go number two, two. Or was it one or two? Wasn't was, it the Reddit thread that said he had been told he was going with number one? Well, I don't Something think was, sparked the he odds. Wasn't gonna, he wasn't going to go one, but I think his, no. odd, his odds to go two, like, shot it, it was It was a Houston situation. Like, skyrocket. Yeah, you're right. I and mean, then, either way. I But I'll still, let me just clarify, right? I think that. Not to hijack your pick here, which I just did. No, it's I, I do. Th- I do think four quarterbacks are going easily in the top, what, thirteen picks. I agree with you easily. I feel like the Patriots are going to move back. I think they are the. If you ask me today to just pick a route for them of what, not what I would do, not what I would do, because boy, do people get pissed about this. What I think they will do, if you ask me, I would say they are. 60% to move out, 20% to take a non-quarterback, 20% to take a quarterback. I don't know if it's that much. Oh, I man. But I do, because here's the thing. This is the war in my head that I have with the Patriots. And I know we're spending a lot of time on this pick, but this is, well, the draft this is, this this is where the draft starts. So, yeah. I cannot they they cannot go into next season with their current quarterback room, right? No, they can't. There's God, only, I can't wait for free agency just so we get some answers to the right, test. There's <laughs> only one Kirk Cousins. Yeah, he Baker, he's not I don't think he's going there from who I talked to this exactly, week. Maybe I'm wrong. Exactly. I, Justin, I asked about New England every time and people were looked at me like mm. Justin like, Fields, right. I don't think he's going there. Baker Mayfield's not leaving Tampa, especially now that Mike Evans is locked up. Yep. Like locked up contract wise, by the way, you know. He's a great person. Didn't not go to lock, jail. Yeah. Just, just, just so we're Just clear. got paid. Not breaking, not breaking any news. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I sit here and say to myself, oh, they have to pick a quarterback because of the roster. Right. But Maybe I, they don't feel I, that I, way. It doesn't feel like they are. So hey, you know what, too? Not to cut you off. Mm-hmm. And this is, this. I'm not a good person to say this because I, I'm biased because of my rankings since summer. Man, is there a lot of steam for Michael Penix right now after he threw. <laughs> There is a lot of, and I'm not saying he's going three. I want want to clarify that. Do it. Go off, King. No, not going three. But I wonder if there's a team that goes, you know what? We will move out because we love a Michael Penix or a Bo Nix. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's that's still unlikely, but it's not crazy to think about. If you got some wild trade return. New England's roster is in a bad way, and they know it. They know it. Uh, I'm going to pick Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay. I don't. This I is what ex- I would do, by the way. I am excited. Um, this is not what I would do. I'd be taking Drake May. I wouldn't be thinking twice about it. But okay. Um, I am excited to do our mock draft after free agency because this pick, I think, gets a lot more workable because we could sit here for two hours and talk about the teams that could trade up to three, but one, we don't have that kind of time Two, it just, it does. It feels like they're going to move back, but I don't know if they're going to move back super far. Right. I can sit here and say to myself, well, all right, we got options at eight. You can move down eight with the Falcons who are going to trade up for a quarterback. Maybe the giants is six. I say, but... What about the giants? <sighs> now that's not too far. That's, I think that's the best option for both sides. Giants going up to get May? Because if you're New England and you go three to six, you are guaranteed one of Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, or Joe Alt. And all three of those players are a fantastic pick for the Patriots. All right, I don't hate this. I don't hate this scenario. What are we getting? Let's, let's fire it up. 
Teams so in three, shit. Well, three teams six for New York Giants are right there. What do you know? All three, right, you, you, you're, you're giving at least a one next year. Oh, yeah. This is not going to be cheap, even though it's three spots. No. So let's think. keep in mind, the Jets did this exact trade with the Colts the year they took Sam Darnold. They did it well in advance of the draft. Well in advance of the draft. Yeah. So they weren't guaranteed like who they were getting, which actually softened the price. The Jets flipped first rounders, and I want to say they gave up three twos. So the value gonna, of three twos. So I was going to say what what I think this is going to cost would be six from the Giants. Uh, Next 39 year's or, one. 39 or 47 from the Giants. Probably 39. A first rounder next year, and then a second rounder probably Ooh. in 2026. Damn, I don't know. I think with the first rounder next year, it's not. That's a lot for three spots. I just quarterback, man. I know. Why so don't we let, do this? okay, so let let's me, let's change our, the pick to forty seven instead of thirty nine. Yeah, so we'll go six forty seven. Okay, a first rounder next year, and then some sort of day two pick, whatever. It's negotiable. Uh, whoever comes out on top, whatever, a second or third in twenty twenty six. Sound good? Yep. All right. Force the trade. Yes. Giants around the clock. Well, we know what they're doing. I think it's I think it's Drake. I think. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going the K. I'm not going the JJ McCarthy route yet. If they do that, <laughs> dude, I, dude, I know, I know. Somebody, somebody proposed to me an idea of Minnesota going from 11 all the way to three to go to get JJ McCarthy. No, Kevin O'Connell knows ball. There's just no. There's no. That's JJ's it's good. Not, though. He, JJ's it's good. not that the man. league thinks he's the league thinks he's really good. Sure. I heard a little bit more mix. I heard some of that and I heard some of the slow down here, partner. Like, well, how did we get here? So, but he's going to go. Hey, it only takes one to tango. You yes, know? it does. Yeah. I mean, this is great for the Giants, <laughs> by the way. What'd you say? I said this is great for the Giants. I think it's great for New England as well, especially if they're not going to take a quarterback. Oh, it's just, right. New England makes that like a band aid. So you are up with the Cardinals number four. Okay. So the Giants took Drake May. Marvin, obviously an easy choice here, but they also, you know, spent a little bit of time getting to know Joe all pretty well. Yes. At the right. Indianapolis. Right. I mean, we, we did this months ago, I believe, where we said, and I will go with Marvin Harrison Jr. here because I think he's the best player in the draft. Okay. But this is, I, I don't want this to be the, hey, you know, 100% Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I think... Many, uh, many are, but many also are not realizing Joe all is viewed as a special tackle prospect special. I feel like he just checked all the boxes. At the he, too. Oh, man, he really he just, did. He's just so solid. He really did. He I mean, he's viewed as a special tackle prospect. So I'm I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. here, but I'm not just going to you know click it and breeze through like it's signed, sealed and delivered. OK, all right. So we got Harrison Jr. going to four, although Joe Alt, like you said, definitely option here. Joe Alt's in play to go in the top four picks of this draft. He has to be. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. Chargers are up at five. Okay, now I'm kind of tempted to get a little crazy. Okay. I'm tempted to have Minnesota trade up from 11 to five to get McCarthy. I mean, do it. I kind of want to see what scenario plays out here at this point, too with McCarthy going very high and with the two teams in the top five who we think have the biggest chance to trade back, trading back. I mean, Jim Harbaugh sitting at number five also makes this very interesting, right? He could yeah. help Joe Ortiz where it's like, hey, you're on the phone. And it's like, oh, they're trading up for McCarthy. All right. Like that, you could basically like sell them on why the price could be a little higher and everything that he was when right. he was in Michigan. You're basically you, you guys are doing the right thing. The right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Those, so, you know, those combos. I. It's funny. I've asked about trades in the draft for quarterbacks with, with a handful of people that have done them. And that really happens. Like the, if, the, if there's a good relationship with the opposing front office, they won't tell you like what to do or even tell them what they are doing it for. But they'll be like, I would go take that kid from blah, blah, blah. Like, I've heard this real, yeah. I'd, I won't go too far down the road in details because there's definitely things I'm, I'm not supposed to say. But it's that that happens. It's wild. <laughs> Joe Ortiz, yeah, my, my guy signed an NDA over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> can't no. Say, can't I don't say want to blow up anyone's spot. Okay, so the Vikings have a second-round pick. I don't think they have a third-round pick because then no. they go straight to 109. So Joe Ortiz was also somebody who talked about, you know, starting his general manager tenure 
wanting to have a good amount of draft picks. You know, I talked about that being a big part of how you succeed as a general manager. It's the Ravens way. Right. It is, is, I mean, that's, so I think that this is absolutely within the realm of possibility. The Chargers moving back, especially for if it's for a quarterback price, if a team believes that J.J. McCarthy is this good. So we got the Chargers trading five, Minnesota's trading 11. They'll also go 109, so that's their first pick in the fourth round. You kind of have to do that, that at that point. They don't really need any other picks this year. Next year's think? two? I was going to say next year's I, I don't two. think it's the one. That's No, I, I would say it's next year's two and then four. Yeah, two and four or a third rounder in 2026 if they wanted to spread it out. Oh, okay. That would be – but, sure. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're not doing the mock draft simulator. For right. I'm, ju- I'm just throwing out what I'm thinking in What's my fair. head. What's fair, right. Per- perhaps gets this done. So, okay, I'm going to force this trade as well. So, now we got Minnesota on the clock. And um us go McCarthy here. We'll go J.J. McCarthy at number five. There it four, is. Two, four quarterbacks in the top five. I mean, it's a good time to show what this would look like. Yeah, this this is also kind of what I was thinking here because we've we've heard so much of a whirlwind for a lot of these quarterbacks. What could it look like if things get a little bit unorthodox? Not that we're doing stuff just to do stuff here in this mock draft, but it does mirror what we have been hearing, that maybe this isn't the most probable path, but it is a plausible path like this is this does have the potential to happen so this is what it looks like if it does right. so here, here we go four quarterbacks and marvin harrison jr off the board we got new england at number six you're up buddy right four quarterbacks and the best player in the draft are off the board in the top five nothing crazy so new england at six this is where it gets really really tough because you have malik neighbors there you have joe alt there i'm gonna go man i'm gonna go with malik neighbors I think that this is a team that desperately needs a playmaker. And in this scenario, maybe New England even signed a, say, a Jacoby Brissett level bridge guy, right? Where he's going to be able to throw the ball to Malik Neighbors. So, and maybe in, there's a wild world where they try to give Mac Jones one more shot in this scenario where they trade it out. Uh, Neighbors is a special playmaker. I think he's a top five player in the draft. He comes off the board at six. All right, so neighbors off the board at six. Titans at number seven. I was kind of looking forward to the analysis of this one because the combine to me changed this a lot. You know, if you missed our yeah uh, mid combine show that we did last week, we highlighted some of what the Titans head coach Brian Callahan and also the general manager Rand Carthen were saying about team building and where they're kind of going from here. We have often just said offensive line, whatever the best offensive line, and we get Joe all on board here. Whatever the best offensive lineman is, they're going to take it. They could absolutely still take Joe Alt if Joe Alt is on the board here at number seven. However, I am going to go a different direction because Rand Carthen specifically talked about offense. He talked about team speed and Brian Callahan talked about the same, right? Callahan was in those debates for the Cincinnati Bengals back in 2021 when it was, oh, do you take Jamar Chase or do you take Penny Sewell? Which one do you take here? They ended up taking Jamar Chase and well, it worked out pretty well for him. Not to say that Penny is a bad player. Obviously, he's a phenomenal player. He would have worked out, I think, regardless. But he saw what getting a game-changing type of wide receiver can do for your team. I think the NFL is head over heels for Romo Dunze. I really do. Wow. I think they love this dude. I think the Titans are going to love this dude. And I'm taking him here at number seven. All right, so Rome comes off the board. Four quarterbacks and three receivers in the top seven. See, this is where it's interesting. The Falcons at eight. Hopefully got their quarterback already because they're gone. I think Kirk is considering a really good connection here. Oh, man. I mean, I love the fit. I love the fit. So let's let's think that they do get something done in the pro market. And after we have free agency and all that, maybe Atlanta doesn't have a quarterback and this becomes a lot easier. They have a good offensive line. They really do. Yeah, they do. The th- receivers are gone already. Unless it, you just want to count Brock Bowers' as slot. Yeah, which, I mean, isn't like that crazy. Would be objectively hilarious if they had But Kyle it's too Bowers. much of a meme. <laughs> For the sake of our own mock draft being t- turned into a graphic, I am not doing this. 
Smart. I'm, Smart. I'm not. No, you gotta you gotta preserve the pod. I understand it. You need to I, save fact, your own really Instagram notifications. You really, really do. <laughs> oh man. You know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with here, and this mm-hmm. might this is gonna surprise some people. Uh, I'm gonna go with Brian Thomas Jr. with this pick. I think that. Whoa. Oh, I, I don't. I, I mean, this is early, but I think he's he's looking. I would lock him into the top 17 right now. And I think with his workouts and now that people are catching up on the tape. Him and him and Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. I wrote this in my NBC article where everything I learned from the combine. Those three are on a rocket ship right now. And there is no spot too early out of the top outside the top seven that would surprise me for any of the three. Any of the three. M- Mitchell Worthy and Thomas Jr. Thomas Jr. is my favorite of the three. So I'm going to have him come off the board here. They need a guy that can really stretch the field. And if they got Kirk Cousins and they rolled out this offense, it would be absolutely insane. <sighs> Oh, you're a madman, but I, I do I do love so, it. Let me say what I wanted to do there, but I couldn't find the right team. And mm-hmm. I feel like Jets Twitter would murder me, but I want to kind of show a realistic scenario. I was trying to find a team that would jump into eight to take all. But I couldn't find the right team. Would the Jets do it? But would, they don't have a second rounder. Yeah, but... But if you used a future two... Yeah, like, but and you're only going from ten to eight. I, I have not, I have not clicked on Brian Thomas Jr. yet. Okay, so you don't think that you don't think that's nuts, right? Because Joe Alt should not just fall into the Jets' lap at ten. That it just, I don't see any way that happens. No, hey, look, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here. If Joe Alt's still on the board at eight, and the Falcons are genuinely taking calls, I, the Jets should call absolutely do the trade. Okay, so let's pull up the the trade. Okay. They should absolutely do this. What do you think from just 10 to 8? And I want everybody to know you're not jumping the Bears for all. You are jumping the market for all. Because he's good enough where every team that needs a tackle is calling. Um, so the Falcons are in an interesting spot because they're either getting an extra second or third from Ridley. Right? Yes. So it's looking like a third, we think, but we'll see. I can't remember the stipulations. Yeah. He's not, if he resign, resigns with Jacksonville. Then it's a second. I believe I, so. I thought it was like if he resigns for a certain amount. Okay. A, Maybe it is more complex. I think We're just two idiots more... running a mock draft simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for subbing to the show. That's we a Brad it. question. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, somebody get Brad on yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how much the Falcons would really need in terms of this year. Like, do you just go... I mean, we're talking about we're talking about Joe Alt here. Yes. So I, I, this might be crazy, but it's like a second next year and a third in twenty twenty six. Is that way too much? You're getting Joe Alt. You're getting Joe Alt. It does feel. I feel like the two is a fair price for the Falcons to go from eight to ten, where they're going to get the same exact guy. You're right. You're right. But, but you it are, just depends on the mark. Well, the reason I didn't do the trade initially was I was like, who? Like, who's going to really get crazy and do this? I mean, would it be the Chiefs? Would the Chiefs offer their whole draft to go from 32 to 8? But I don't think the Falcons The Falcons can't go no, to No, the Bengals would, though. You think the Bengals would? Okay. Yeah. And, and that's people, not as crazy because at least Cincinnati's at 18. Yeah. And the Dolphins at 21. Let's you, let you say they get a second-round pick next year. Okay. Let's just do a two next year. Okay. And if we're way off... I think what's more important is sue us. showing that. Yeah. Yeah. File the lawsuit against the yeah, pod. Sue us legal. dare you. All right. My we name have, is Brad have, Spielberger. Okay. Have, Spell that out. And I'm Sam Monson. S-A-M-M-O-N-S-O-N. <laughs> All right. We're forcing the trade. Okay. Oh, wait. What, what just happened here? Oh, I just. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I think I just. I forgot to select. Trevor versus the mock draft machine. Select. Never heard of it. <laughs> This is the greatest rivalry in sports. Me not crapping myself with my own product on my own show. Where are the Jets? Am I a moron? I mean, it goes without saying. Oh, no. Can I not trade with the Jets anymore? Oh, no. They're right here. They're at the bottom. What is happening? Forces trade. <laughs> Boom. Look at that. Just gave him number eight for free. 
All right, Joel, to the New York Jets. Any Jets fans who are trying to like clip that? Good shout luck. Out shout out to Paul. We yeah, love you. shout out to Boy Green. That's we, gonna be a tough one to aggregate. We love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> we you're, absolutely you're, you're, ruined it. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to dice that one up. But yeah. at the end of the day, the Jets came away with Joe Alt, so you're welcome. Yeah. Um, Chicago Bears. How long are we into this? Trevor podcast? just wanted to avoid me from ruining the mock draft with we're my 30, guy. We're thirty three minutes in this podcast, and we're at pick nine. Yeah, going, it's going well. <laughs> the worst. Chicago, Chicago. <laughs> Bears. Tell my dog now. She's definitely feeding herself <laughs> in three hours. <laughs> All right, Chicago's up at number nine. Boy, you went Brian, Brian Thomas Jr. Now I feel like I have no fear, you know, for any wide receiver. Have no fear. I mean, you can go with Mitchell here, Bowers. Like you said, play him in the At least Bowers on the Bears graphic isn't like as memeable as the Falcons. I kind of like Byron Murphy. Okay. Man, is it wide open for first defensive player drafted? Yeah. You know who's a sneaky one? Who freaking Quinion Mitchell? My oh, God. Oh, yeah. Not that sneaky. To no, be not anymore. After Senior Bowl, it was like, whoa. After Combine, it was like, damn. Dude, my, I, I would I would pick him here because like Jalen's obviously a free agent, but I do but think they're going to get of, that done. But imagine just, hint, them I, together. No, I know. But like Tyreek was had moments last year. They, yeah. They've drafted Brisker. They've drafted Kyler Gordon. Like they've already put a ton in the secondary. They have. That's fair. So. It basically comes down to Jared Verse or Byron Murphy the second for me. Okay. And then you can hit wide receiver later. Okay. Well, you could definitely do that. They use the second round pick on an edge rusher. They have used picks on interior, but they don't have that. I'm no, nah, I'm going I'm going Byron Murphy the second. Okay. From Texas. I'll try to up the pace here. Yeah, me too. So the Falcons now on the clock at 10. They did a great job I mean, getting that extra. Your, you can still take your boy. And I can take Brian Thomas. Yep. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. There we go. Brian Thomas, who, by the way, so Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1. Don't know if you guys saw that. Unreal. At 165 pounds. Right. Brian Thomas was the second fastest 40 of the wide receivers. 4-3-3 four, three, three. at 44 more pounds, which is stupid. Right. And he could, ridiculous. He could still get, he could even put on more muscle. I know. He is a tall, he's got length. All right. So Brian Thomas Jr. going top 10. Um, The Los Angeles Chargers here at 11. Man, Bowers is still there. Wow. Good living. I think this is where, I think this is where Cunyon comes off the board for me. They need corner. They need corners so bad. We badly. went over, remember we went He's, over DJ's mock? Didn't he have Terran Arnold to them at five in that mock? Yeah, yeah. And I think Arnold's going high too, but I think I think Mitchell's going I think Mitchell's the first corner taken. I think Mitchell's TB won. Yep. Yep. And um the Chargers need cornerback badly. So I know it's not a receiver, but He's their type of guy too. Very intense. Very focused. Oh, I think he's gonna mesh very well with that yeah. Harbaugh Michigan coaching yeah. staff coming over. I think he's gonna be fantastic. So, Quinion at 11. All right. The Broncos at 12. I mean, you know I'm doing it. I'm taking Penix here. Oh, whoa. You think he's going this high? I think he could. And I think Denver, whoa. once again, like we wait on free agency to see what's going to happen. But Denver has to draft a quarterback. Man. And I think Sean Payton is really going to like this guy a lot. All right. I really do. All right. I don't think he's going that high. We will not, see. I'm not. I'm I wouldn't not, call it a lock, but it, I mean, in a draft where four quarterbacks were gone in the top five picks. No, I hear you. I hear you. And until, like you said, until until free agency plays out. Right. Then that's what's going to open the door a little bit right, for some quarterback right. movement. I don't even know if Penix is a first round lock. I wouldn't, call, really, I wouldn't call him a first round lock, but, but he, the he medical, the medicals weekend, going right. well was a big step. You and I talked about that. I don't care. I, he's played two fully healthy years. Right. But, but the NFL fine. did. It was all I was told. It was like, don't put him in the first round. Well, they lied to yeah. you and the rest of us. Yeah. And so, they should be ashamed. That workout, I mean, I, I don't care about the workout. I cared about the two years of tape. But, yeah, Penix at 12 to the Broncos. Raiders up at 13. 
tough draw for them in this spot. I mean, still going to get a great player, but I, this team, Antonio Pierce has been vocal that they need someone under center. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I think they're going to be one of those teams that's obviously really trying to get up to go get a quarterback. So we didn't have a move this time, but maybe we will once free agency comes around. I think they could use Cooper DeGene, honestly. Sure. But I think Arnold probably goes off the board earlier. I would agree. I think, dude, I think the NFL is just going to love Taron Arnold. And how do you not, man? Nate He's Wiggins so, is the interesting one. Wiggins, is, I, I think Wiggins is too skinny, though. No, he is, now, he listen, is listen, listen, listen. I love Nate Wiggins, but I think there's going to be a lot of teams in the NFL that look at him and they see the blazing speed, they see the athleticism, but they're like, man, you're thin as a rail. We True. need to tackle. True. Sauce Gardner you know, was like that, though. And you nobody cared. I guess so. Sauce was Sauce was bigger though. Yeah, Sauce. I don't think was. I don't think Wiggins plays like Sauce. No, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Arnold. Okay. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go Terry and Arnold. Okay. You're up, Saints fourteen. Saints at fourteen. I'm gonna take Taliza Fuaga. And you damn well should, right. brother. Uh, Fuaga at 14, really good business for the Saints. They need a tackle. Didn't like the penning pick. Go back to the tackle well here. Easy you know one. who else I think could go 14 right there? Uh, Troy Fatanu. Your boy. Man. Troy Fatanu. By the way, Fatanu. Yes. Yes. I, the first thing I asked him, I'm like, let's get this right. We've said font now. I've heard it 85 it's, it's, different it's ways. It's the emphasis on the, uh, the early part of the word, right? Fa. Fa. Great Fuaga. combine for him and Fuaga, man. They were RAS beast the way they tested. You really do measurements. Love to see it. You just you just love to see the boys have a good combine. This con this 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 podcast was on him, baby. And it, I was loving seeing yes. those huge. Good, yes. Huge you were an early man on Fuaga. I was early man on Fatanu. Fatanu. Yep. Uh yeah. Fatanu. We'll get it right one day. Fatanu. Man. I gotta drill that into my into my head. Who's still on the board right here at 15? I know Colts aren't going to take No, no, no. Colts all line up. Uh, back line nicely a little bit year. better here. Yeah. Um, man. Xavier Worthy? No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Brock Bowers is still here. Brock Bowers is the pick, right? Yeah. I, mean, I can't. We, I go can't full, I can't. we go full circle. I can't talk myself out of this. Brock Bowers. Uh, yeah, we're going Bowers at 15. I think if Bowers makes it. Now, ultimately, I think the Brock Bowers is going to be picked between picks 11 and 20. I really do. But it's hard for me to not kind of split the difference to see him going to 15 if he's available at 15. So. All right. So the Seahawks, this becomes very easy. Uh, Troy Fatanu. I mean, I love th for this line, having a guy that's a great athlete that can play inside outside. He is plug and play. We know how much Schneider puts a premium on athletes. This is we've done this pick a lot, and that's because it's a really damn good fit for them. I agree. Jags up at 17. Hmm. Jags Paris Johnson, maybe? He's going or he's going early. So yeah. mine goes first. I, How I, I are like Dallas that. Turner and Jared Verse still on the board? What did Ver we do here? I mean, it's not really that nuts. I think they're good players. I don't know if they're viewed as top 10 picks, and we're not that far away. This offensive class is just getting if a I, lot I think, of love. But you're right. No, you're right. It is pretty crazy for how good they are. I think they're good enough to get picked before this, but I don't really know where they would this go. This is the draft, though. Every year we're like, how? Who? <laughs> Someone's got to fall. Um, Billy M said this on Twitter. He's like, I think this is the year that 50 prospects all go first round. <laughs> like, <it's> just <laughs> Well, he, <laughs> here's what's actually crazy. Olu Fashanu is on the board. Is it crazy? Is it? I'm still really high on Fashanu, but it's not that crazy if he, if he's, you know, still hanging around here. I think people will be surprised to hear Fatanu going over him. But I think people like the floor of him more than Fashanu. So I don't, I'm, I'm obviously not ripping up the draft and 
It's he's not going to be around for much longer. What's Cam Robinson's contract? I th- isn't it cuttable right now? I thought there was some talk of that. Um, Rumors. He. Yeah. I mean, you could pretty easily. Oh, yeah. You absolutely You'd save could. over 17 mil and only eat 4.6 in dead money. Yeah, but they, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't nah. cut him. And won't you just redo it? Well, they would probably just play him this year, and if they drafted Olu Fashanu, then Olu just gets the job next year. Right. That's what I'm thinking about right here. And then if they lose Calvin Ridley, I mean, they could easily take a guy like Adonai Mitchell in the spot, and nobody would be surprised at all. I'm going Fashanu. Okay. I was going to take him for the Bengals next. Yeah. Get absolutely smoked, Get buddy. absolutely wrecked. <laughs> 45 I mean, minutes into the pod. We are not outside of the top 20. No, nah, we're doing good. We're doing good. Don't worry about it. Bengals. I mean, maybe this will be a little bit of a surprise now. Oh, man. No, never mind. I didn't realize he's still on the board. This is very easy. This is Marius Mims. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I didn't realize he was still sitting there. I was actually going to go with um, a defensive player. But no, Marius Mims. Love sitting down with him. He's a lot of fun. He I talked to, you know, some people teams that interviewed him and they freaking loved the dude. Mm. He is from a different planet the way he is built. Uh, yeah. So I'm a big believer in his development. I don't know if I've ever seen a human being carry 340 pounds better than him. No, he looks like a power forward. Um, right. Did right. you know he practiced on both sides this year for Georgia? He said 60, 40, 60 percent. of it. Yeah, I was really impressed with that. He's like, I practiced 60 percent of my snaps at right tackle, 40 at left tackle. Uh, so he's, he's a guy that can truly do both. Okay. All right. Yeah. Love to hear you that. You love to see it. No, you do. Rams are up at 19. Basically have their pick of any edge rusher they won this class. Which is a score for the Rams. Yeah. I like offensive line for them, but obviously, um, they yeah, need a, quite a few things. Yeah. I'm looking at their depth chart now. Uh, I just don't know who they would prefer between Dallas Turner and Jared Verse. Right. Dallas Turner had a nuts combine. He did, as expected. Yeah, as expected. Yeah, I mean, he's, and that's his he's game. A crazy athlete. God, I also think they're going to love Latu, who did not test as poorly as I thought that he fe- as I like. We were celebrating his four six whatever. 40. Dude, I was just so pumped we when, were. I, when I saw that. Because what was his other thirty two inch vert, nine ten broad? Obviously not great, but it's fine. You know, six five like two sixty. Right, it's fine. It wouldn't be a big deal. What was Jared versus verse ran a four eight five thirty five inch vert. 10 7 broad and then what was turner turner was like four four six forty and a half i mean vert. turner is yeah he's, he's from a different <laughs> uh, universe 10 7 broad yeah we're going we're going dallas turner here for the rams dallas turner to the rams that makes a lot of sense all right the steelers at 20 man they're an interesting one because of how good this center class is but i still mm-hmm. i still think they need another corner and I like the way this corner board is sitting here. Yep. Right now. Oh, man. I think I'm going to go Wiggins in this spot. Oh, I thought you were going to go to Gene. I was, but. Then I changed my mind. <laughs> then I changed my mind. I, I like the Gene better, but I, I'm not confident. The That's league views does. him as this island corner. He's more chess piece. I don't agree with that. But yeah, I'm going to go with Wiggins here. All right. Okay, Wiggins off the board at 20. Dolphins at 21. I love that their need on the mock draft machine is OL. Not like offensive tackle, interior line, center. Literally just, any just, offensive just lineman. Get some help in here. All three of their starting interior offensive guys are free agents. Teron Armstead's flirting with retirement. You, which that's a, that's a big variable. Wasn't like Christian Wilkins, isn't he like he They're not tagging he, him. Yeah, he's hitting free agency. Yeah, they're not tagging him. Probably JPJ here. Right. 
could play probably, guard and center. Probably. Yeah. And even even played D line for a game in college. Man, Latham though. Latham is here. Did you hear anything on Latham? I I really didn't. I, I thought the weight was great. Rate was great. I yeah, mean, shows, I, shows I, shows I was a low man on him. I was I was very happy to see him at three forty two instead of three sixty. Yeah. But no, yeah. I, I didn't hear I didn't hear anything. I so the one nugget I had in my article was teams are legitimately 50 50 split on him being a tackler or guard. That was the one thing I heard. Hmm. He's he's the most like you know polarizing player in terms of whether he has to play inside or outside. Where hmm. for the longest time we thought that would be Fatanu. Mm. It's not anymore. I don't think. No, no. I think that um, Fatanu has a really good chance of playing tackle. Hell yeah! And I did not think that was going to be the case. Good for he him. Thir- he showed up at thirty-four and a half inch arms, which is sixty-eighth percentile for NFL offense tackles all year. He's probably why does everybody think I'm a guard? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> probably right. Uh, we're going to Jackson Powers Johnson here. Okay. For the, uh, for the Dolphins at twenty-one. Eagles at 22. Shout out to Jason Kelsey on the retirement. What yep. a legend of a human being. Truly. Really excited to see him go full media career now. Eagles at 22, man. I mean, I would think they they have to capitalize on this corner class as well. They really do. Now, I'm going to take the gene here just because I think he's too good. Mm-hmm. And I do think they could use a DB that can play a lot of different positions in the secondary, a lot of different roles. So DeGene, to me, I know he couldn't test because he's coming back from the injury, but right. he's a really, really good athlete. And I, I love Philadelphia being all over the secondary in this draft. Okay. All right. Not an SEC player, though. Which True. Normally, that's where Howie goes. Right. The we'll see if he breaks the mold. Houston Texans here at 23, I mean, it couldn't have broke any better for them. I'm going Jared Verse. I'm not really thinking twice about it. No, easy. Um, I think any of these head rushers that would still be there make a ton of sense. Jared Verse on one side, Will Anderson on the other. Those are just two rock solid, great young defensive ends. So I love that, especially if they end up losing um, Jonathan Grenard in, in, in free agency. So versus 23 to Houston. Cowboys at 24. Tyron Smith expected to test free agency. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with JC Latham here. Smart. Yeah, they yep. need they need offensive line help. They are I'm pretty confident they are going to draft an offensive lineman. It's just a matter of if they move or not. So Latham comes off the board here at 24. Oh man, what do the Packers do? They're trick has been our uh, our binky in this spot. <laughs> it's like, oh, Packers? Easy. Yeah. You know what? I I'll tell you one I love for them. I love Johnny Newton to Green Bay. I really do. Are they going to pick him, though? Do they need him? Dude, I love Johnny. The fact that Johnny Newton's even still available is, like, is a is sin because his tape. He's very, very good. He is I saw, I too saw underrated, uh, man. Our, our buddy John Ledyard tweeting out, why is nobody talking about this tape, basically? No, he's awesome. And it's like, yeah, he's he is. Uh, people have really started to go like full circle where he was such a hot prospect during the fall. And now he's been dealing with that injury, so he didn't test. And people are forgetting he's he's a top 20 player in this draft easily. They have Kenny Clark. They have TJ Slayton. They have Devontae Wyatt. Has he not been good? Who? Wyatt. I think I thought Admit, Wyatt, Admittedly, I have not watched a lot of I Wyatt. I thought Wyatt started out slow. Okay. But I think he's been fine since. Good. Like, I think he had a good second half of the season. Packers fans can maybe yell at me if that's not true. Good. That that about, would help a lot in all of this. What about Tyler Newbin? Do you think we get around one safety? If we I mean, do, if it's we, him. If we do, it's Newbin. Right. I still I like Newbin a lot. I don't think they're going to take corner. Uh, Tyler Guyton. Uh, right. Mm. Freaky tackle. Yeah, because they're moving on from Bakhtiari, right? Maybe. Nobody's trading for him. John Runyon's a free agent. They don't really save any money in the Bakhtiari situation. Do you know that? I mean, as long as they don't have a crap ton of dead cap, then Ni- it might he, be. He costs nineteen point one million in dead money. Hmm. That's a that's a tricky one, Bakhtiari. But to be fair, Trevor, to your point, like you're not counting on him, so it doesn't this converse, conversation doesn't really matter, right?
I'm going to pickle. <laughs> Green Bay, they are really tough. If you if you screw Green Bay is one of the top three fan bases of if you don't follow their parameters, you will <laughs> hear it. You will get owned online. All right. Well, I'm going to take Tyler Newbin. Okay. Whatever. Tyler Newbin, 25, Green Bay Packers. Bucks at 26. I don't know what they're going to do. The, the the Packers, that is. Okay. I was going to say, come on, I need you here. Uh, I, so I like Layatu Latu here for the Bucks. Yeah, it feels really weird that he'd be available. But Does it? You, you got the injury. You got the brother, average testing. Brother, the tape's way the tape's too good. tape's wild. I mean, you don't way have to convince me. Good. Way too good. We were sitting there in July with our jaws on the floor. Second year in a row, he's just been a monster. I know. and he's Nobody he's, can block him. He's just one of those dudes that's going to be really well received. Real team guy. I think there's I think there's three players that I would okay. seriously consider for them. Latu's one of them. Yep. Graham Barton's the yes. other. Yes, Barton was my second option. And then the third choice is Darius Robinson from Missouri. Wow. Oh, man. I hope they don't do that at 26. Well. I really hope they don't do that. I don't think if it's if it's like him or Latu, I can't imagine they take him over Latu. I but. like Barton here a lot, by the way. Because yeah, he, he's, he could truly. No, all he's, five. An immediate, he's an immediate starter for them. No doubt. All five. Especially you run it back with Baker and Evans. I think they got the tackle figured out in uh, Gadecki and Wirfs. Mock's going to take one of those spots, and then Barton could take guard or center. You know what? I'll take Latu because I think they can still get that player on day two. I would agree with you. I okay. think that's Latu smart. at 26. I think that's smart. So the Arizona Cardinals, we have them going Marvin Harrison Jr. at. Number four, if it falls this way, Monty Austin Ford is an early candidate for general manager of the year. Uh, Jerzon Newton. I say you got to do it to him. Yeah, not even thinking twice about it. If he gets to 27, you're sprinting the card up there. All right, Buffalo 28, another really easy pick. Adonai Mitchell from Texas. He's going in the first round. He can fly. Buffalo is all over this wide receiver class. I actually wonder if they explore trading up for one. All right. There we go. Short and sweet for Buffalo right there. But it's easy. Yeah, it, it does feel like after his testing, there's going to be He's some going. teams that fall in love He's with going. A.D. Mitchell. I don't know if it's going to be Buffalo. I, you know, Mitchell's frustrating to me because – Somebody's talked about this on Twitter, and I agree. Like, there are times when I watch Mitchell, and it, it's it, he's not going full speed. I didn't have he's him not. in my top 10 wide receivers, Trevor. Right. I, so, right. he's not going full speed on the field, and it's frustrating because when he does go full speed, you see an NFL caliber type of wide receiver, a right. very, very talented football player. I comp him to T. Higgins when he's at his best, and T. Wow. Higgins is about to make a shit ton of money on free agency for a reason. He's He, he is that kind of a wide receiver to me. But I don't know why it's not consistent snap in and snap out. I don't know. So I think it's up to teams to answer that question. Some are going to be able to answer it well. Some might have a little bit more question marks. Ultimately, though, I do think back end of the first round, at the very worst, very early part of the second round, is where you're getting A.D. Mitchell off the board. He's just too damn talented. Lions at 29. Uh, man. I, if Ennis Rakeshaw Jr. would have tested better... Yeah, I, I don't. You, I don't think round one is I happening. Told you for him. He's, he, he's going twenty nine, but I, I agree. I, I don't think the round one's happening anymore for him. Barton is still here, and they could take an offensive line, but I think their offensive line's pretty set. I've said this before, like Darius Robinson just feels like their type, but Chop Robinson tests like an alien, right? And I th- think he's going round one now yeah he confirmed what people had hoped for him who who do you think the lions would rather have chop robinson or darius robinson my heart says darius robinson. And my heart says darius robinson it does as crazy as that is that inside not outside close to the out athlete that junkyard Robinson's. dog yeah but he might be a better football player right and that's all the lions care about yep that was, we saw this last year yeah right, I, think, I think darius robinson they also need a corner but yeah, but here's like day two. Kool Aid's right there, and people are gonna be like, "Yo, Kool Aid was right I there." I don't think he's a lock to go in round one at all. Yeah, I don't either. We were talking with our good friend um, EJ Snyder from Bootleg, and we we're mentioning 
Kool-Aid McKinstry to Detroit. And I said, I like that. And he said, no, I don't. Cause he doesn't tackle really well. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't think it's a calling card of his game, but I don't think he's that bad at it. I think he's so good at man coverage. I, it's not like I'm just saying like, oh, this guy can't tackle him out on him. But that is why I mentioned Ennis Drake Shard Jr. first, because he does tackle. Like he is that come up and hit you type of corner, but he just, he, he did not test very well. Maybe Detroit doesn't care about that, but that's why I didn't consider him. Anyways, you're up at uh, 30 with the Ravens. So you went up, but you went with Darius Robinson, right? Yes. Okay. The Ravens at 30 are tricky. This wide the way the wide receivers fell is kind of weird. Not weird. It's just a little bit. There's no no brainer for them. Keon Coleman's going to be fascinating after that 40. I know the play speed tells a different story. Look, man. Somebody else can draft him. Yeah, yeah I'm not that's, doing that's, that in the first that's, round. That's, that, that's all I'm going to say. Yep. You know, like I mean, we had the combo when we did the wide receiver episode. Keon has incredible traits. But at this point, there is so much variance into what he shows. When even with his athleticism, somebody else can draft him, and he might turn into an all-pro. And I might just have to say, "Hey, you know what? Hat tip, whatever." But I'm I'm now of the camp of like somebody else take him, not me. Right. Man. Okay. Well, the D line. I mean, the two top D line already went. Off the board. Yeah, they're not, they're not letting Meta BK out. No, you can't. Braden Fisk? That's not insane, by the way. That's not insane. Little round one? It's really between him. Uh, Troy Franklin, Franklin maybe. Mm-hmm. I think he's more mm-hmm. round two now. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. It's a it's not a I think, cur- he's probably, I think he's probably round two. Yeah. But that's like all the players we're talking about in this spot. Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins is someone that. Or Kool-Aid. Like they need a corner. They do need a corner. Kool-Aid their, makes sense. Their, I don't think he's going in the first round. I really don't. We went from 50 players in the first round and now we can't I, even this get is what happens. I'm going to go with Chris Jenkins. <laughs> Okay. Chris Jenkins, very Baltimore kind of player. Just he is uh, rugged oh, in the would. trenches. Did you already pick him? I did. Oh, okay, never mind. Why? Because right. Chop Robinson is still here. Yeah, but do they really need another edge like that? Well, yeah, maybe not. I mean, you already have a Jabo there. Yeah, and you're hoping no Jabo could be that. Yeah, that dude. So the Niners are now here um, at 31. Uh, you know, McKinstry is here. What about O line though? Definitely in need. I feel like O line's definitely in need for the fellas. Guyton is there. Wow. Guyton I mean, is there. Oof. Barton is there though. Right. Barton, good football player. Anybody else in the interior that we're overthinking? Mmm, Zach Frazier. Mmm. I actually have no idea how well Jake Brendel played last year for them. I mean, they gave him a pretty good deal, didn't they? Oh, did they? I thought so. I remember it was a, it was, you know, somewhat of a bigger deal when he signed there. I'm going to go Tyler Guyton. Cause you yeah, get, that's, uh, that's what I would eventually play right tackle right away. Right. For him. Yep. Tyler Guyton. All right. Guyton comes well, up. To- Tyler Guyton, Trent Williams. Oh, that's pretty sick. Spider-Man meme. I'm just kidding. Damn. Could uh, be. Could be. Chiefs at 32. Fire up the memes. I'm taking Xavier Worthy in this spot. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> I am, though, really. Xavier Worthy. No, but for real, I am. I actually am dead serious about this. <laughs> Make all the jokes you want until Patrick Mahomes is throwing 70-yard bombs to Xavier Worthy just running in open space. <laughs> MBS? Spider-Man? Yeah. No, Worthy... Uh, he does <laughs> drop the ball sometimes. You're right. <laughs> Shit. Uh, all right, let's get into round two. Okay, all right, so hold on. All right, so you went, Friday. You had you, you had Xavier Worthy there. Yeah. Um I do want to say, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Xavier Worthy. Hell yeah. Breaking the 40 record at the combine. It's unbelievable. Is absolutely nuts. However, all of that to say, in lieu of that, 
a lot of people counting his speed twice. Of course. You know, we t- including the NFL, is- by the way. Let me make sure that no, I know this I is know. what I think will happen. These are and I and I agree. And I think you're, you're doing the right thing. I think Xavier Worthy's going around one. But, you know, people listen to this show not only to hear our tomfoolery and hear the mock draft picks, but also, <laughs> you know, hopefully giving them a little bit of like scouting tips here and there from just the knowledge that we have doing this for a little bit. There is a saying when it comes to combine time, don't count trades twice. OK, right. if you evaluated a player and you said to yourself, this guy's fast on tape when he's fast at the combine, don't bump him up more because he's fast. You already knew he's fast. And for Xavier Worthy, I think a lot of people are counting his speed trait twice, right. sometimes three times. Now, you could say to yourself, Trev, there's a difference between being fast and being 4 two, one fast. And I would agree with you. Except here's the problem. I already thought he was extremely fast. And instead, the rest of his scouting report struggles to drop sometimes, got some concentration drops, got some physicality drops. He's 165 pounds, skinny as a rail, not going to do a ton for you in the blocking game. Now, if you just want him to go long in a Patrick Mahomes offense, Mahomes is going to feed him. All right, this I think it could work, right? I think it could be great. All I'm saying is, wherever you land on Xavier Worthy, we already knew he was fast before the combine. You don't have to act like you're surprised that he's fast now. So Yeah, it's a good rant. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, we're going to get to the second and third round. Before we do that, i got to talk to you about our friends over at uh, Fabric by Gerber Life. If you got a family, you got to get them term life insurance to protect them. One of the smartest financial decisions that you can make. And uh, this time of year, it's now perfect to get that done. So you can focus on whatever the rest of 2024 has in store for you. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to get you high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policies in less than 10 minutes. They got flexible policies that are fit your family's budget with quality policies like million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. You can get your personalized quote in just minutes and then apply whenever it is convenient for you. All online until your schedule. You can go from start to cover it in less than 10 minutes with no health exam required. Join the thousands of parents who trust Fabric to protect their family. Apply today in just minutes at meetfabric.com slash stock exchange. That is meetfabric.com slash stock exchange. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash stock exchange. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. I was trying to rope in a uh, Dune 2 bucket. Um, joke into that ad read when we got to the meat fabric part, but um, you know I couldn't figure it out. We're still workshopping it. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling through the first round so you guys can uh, can see this recap here uh, for audio only people. I'm sorry, I love you. I'm not going to read all of them. We got we got too many picks to make. But this is everybody who was picked in the first round, and to start the second round, pick 33. I'm on the clock, and I'm picking. I'm picking Slick Rick. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking pretty Ricky. Let's go. I'm, pre- I'm I'm picking pickle Rick, the one, the only Gator great himself. I'm taking Ricky Pearsall. I know that Ricky Pearsall and the Carolina Panthers have a little bit of a connection here, you know, when it comes to uh, pre-draft interest. And Ricky, man, what an unbelievable 2023 season that he has had uh, for his draft stock overall. Really good year this past year. I think he showcased a lot more traits than uh, just a regular old slot receiver. Went into Mobile at the Senior Bowl, and he played so well in the first two days of practice. He didn't even need to show up for that third day. And he had a monster combine with percentiles in the high 80s or low 90s in the 40-yard dash, the vertical jump, the broad jump, the three-cone, the short shuttle. And there was a video that came out of him throwing down a windmill dunk to show off the bunnies as well. So Ricky Pearsall will lead the Carolina Panthers in targets, in yards, in catches, in heart, in one-handed grabs, and basically everything that they need for that offense for next year. He's new at the field. Ricky Pearsall to the Carolina Panthers at 33. 34, the Patriots working with some extra draft capital after they traded uh, out of three into six. They took Malik Neighbors at six. At this pick, I'm going to take Graham Barton. They need offensive line help. They get a guy that can play all five spots. I mean, two awesome picks with him and neighbors in the first two rounds. Cardinals, they got um, Marvin Harrison Jr. at the top of the first round. They got um, Johnny Newton at the back end of the first round. And I mean, dude, 
Do I go Cooley McKinstry here? Well, I mean, what a home run this would be here. It's in play. I mean, yeah, Cardinals have they have a chance to do a lot of damage. That's just an absolute monster draft. Cooley McKinstry going 35 to the uh to the Arizona Cardinals for there. Okay. 36 is the Commanders. They took Jaden Daniels second overall. So they believe they have their quarterback of the future. This is a team that could dip into the offensive line well. I actually want to see their roster Ooh, ed- real quick. Edge rusher, though. They could they use need Ed. They, they need him bad. They do. They need a lot of things, though, because I also really like Zach Frazier with this pick. Mm. Right. That's, I mean, good football player. Right. So, I, you got to You got to keep. J, you can't have Jaden Daniels getting clobbered. And I like bringing him and Frazier in together. Nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Frazier at 36. Okay. All right. Frazier at 36 to Washington. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers went with Quinion Mitchell at number 11. Ah, oh, man, Troy Franklin. That'd be a great pull for them. Very nice one, too. I like that. He's talking think, himself think, into it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. I mean, Peyton Wilson, maybe. I don't. What's their linebacker situation? Because I, I like Peyton Wilson a lot. What's their linebackers right now? Kenneth Murray is a free agent, though. Eric Kendricks, he's old. Uh, they drafted Diane Henley, but you know, third rounder last year. They could definitely go with Peyton Wilson, I think. Mm, edge rusher as well. Nah, man. I I think I'm going Troy Franklin here. Oh, Chop Robinson, though. Yeah, I know. He's the one lingering. Yeah, and Roman Wilson. I think we're talking Roman Wilson at this point, too. Jim knows mm. him well. Who do you think? Ah, damn, you're right, Jim. Son of a gun. He might go Roman Wilson. He really might. I'm doing it. I'm going Roman Wilson, 37. It's not crazy at all after the kind of... Queen Yon Mitchell, Roman Wilson, just the the small boys, the smalls. they They know each other from the senior bowl. They went to battle. Yeah, they did. Not nah, two good football players, though. Really good football players. All right, the Titans at 38. They took Aroma Dunze at seven. Mm-hmm. We're going to look for a tackle in this spot, and I'm going to go with Kingsley Suamatia here mm-hmm. because he's a guy that has a lot of traits that need to be developed, and if anyone knows how to do that, it's Bill Callahan. So they could take the risk on those traits. There we go. Okay, so we've got... Um... Oh, who they take in the first? Uh, Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze and Kingsley Suamatia. That's amazing. Uh, Giants, we have them trading up to go get Drake May at number three overall. Like, I'm going keep to this pick. give them Troy Franklin. Ooh. They, they, so you don't Troy think Franklin. that him and Jalen Hyatt kind of cancel each other out? Well, I think he's way better than Jalen Hyatt. Sure. Okay. I mean, I agree. I love Troy Franklin. I think he's... Hold on here. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anybody for the Giants, but. I mean, the only yeah, other obvious I mean, guy would be Chop Robinson, but they could also sign a pass rusher. Listen, I don't think the pick's crazy. I just wanted to raise a question. Because we're about your to. Your question's bad, all right? Troy Franklin's a good football player. I genuinely think that Troy Franklin could be a wide receiver one on that team. So. Yeah, and I, I talked to Jalen Hyatt at the Super Bowl, and he sounded like he was excited about the idea of going back to his natural position, the slot. Mm. And Franklin's a guy that legitimately could play on the outside. But they slot. already have Darren Waller eats the slot. And well, and 500, run. they have like 500 slot receivers. But uh, yeah, mm. this is the problem with the Giants roster. Don't, don't no, blame Troy, me. Troy Franklin, Troy Franklin's way more well-rounded. than He that. can play on the outside. That's the point. Yeah. So yeah, we're going Franklin here. Okay. Franklin. I'm taking Chop Robinson to the Commanders. Commanders yeah, doing good. Commanders doing really well right now. The Lord's work. I mean, oh. Zach Frazier at center, Chop Robinson on the edge, and they got Jaden Daniels. Um, man, I would like Jordan Morgan for the Packers, but I don't think he holds up to their threshold. Right. So that stinks. So I don't really think I could do that. Oh, Patrick Paul. I mean, they like a row row as well. Okay, yeah, that's a very Packers pick. Yeah, it's a super Packers pick. Him and their first rounder from last year don't play the same position, technically. Brian Brzee? Or... No, no. Oh, you're talking Lucas Van Ness? Van Ness. 
No, I I think Van Ness is more of an edge, and he I is. think Root's more of an interior defensive okay. line. But I think they like to be pretty versatile, Multiple. anyways. Yeah. Um, I haven't picked him yet, though. So hopefully you didn't pick him on. I didn't. Okay. Uh, when's their next pick? Fifty-seven. That's not bad at all. That's not. Uh, so it's not a second round pick. Because I'm like, oh, do they go Jonathan Brooks? But I don't think they would. Packers, man, they're driving me up a wall. <laughs> Sending me the loony bin. You have nightmares about this pick. I kind of do. I don't think Patrick Fall is. Oh, man. You know what? I like here. Wow. I'm. Um, because mm, what did. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, he didn't. He didn't even. Oh, he measured in. Oh, dude, he's got hella long arms. Thirty-six and one eighth. Oh, I mean, there's arms. no denying what kind of DNA he's made of. He's nah. He's they're drafting this dude. Freaky they're stuff. drafting him. They're drafting him so right. hard. I mean, Gary the Packers 49. do whatever the hell they want in the draft. So yeah, we're going Kieran Amagaji, the offensive tackle from Yale, who I also think could play on the interior as well, which kind of fits their cup of tea. All right, the Chargers at 42. They've taken Quinion Mitchell. They've taken Roman Wilson. No, no, no. They didn't take... They took... Uh, they, wait. They took Quinion Mitchell at 11. They traded out. I traded... F- right? I'm not losing my mind. We just went I over still this. Have, I still have the Vikings for 42. Oh, did I mess up the trade simulator? Yes, because I think we went with their other pick, 109. Okay, so the Vikings right. are on the clock here. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> Where well, the Vikings are going to be on the clock I here. have the Vikings on the clock. All right, so they gave up more capital the following year in this scenario. Yes. The Vikings took... Did you lose yes. another battle yes. of the mock draft simulator? We don't know. <laughs> the Vikings took J.J. McCarthy at five after trading up with the Chargers. Yes. So, they still need a lot of help on defense. I mean, Brian Flores is working with... Not a lot last year, I would say. Mm. I want to look at what's available at corner to start. They also need some detackle help. Your boy TJ Tampa. Tampa's in play here for me. Last year in... out. It's pissed. You know who I want to take here? Tavondre Sweat. <laughs> just, just beef in the middle. Do you think he'll go second round? I, I this is early. I think. I mean, you can't teach girth. No, I and I think his tape warrants being taken here, but I definitely think there'll be some questions about the size. I'm going to go with TJ Tampa here for Brian Flores. Okay. All right. I don't hate that. I think that that's, that's a very good selection. I'm a TJ Tampa guy. Um, Falcons at 43. Mm, we had them go. Who did they take? Brian Thomas Jr., number 10. Probably Chris Braswell then. Oh, he's Isaac too. Mmm. Braden Fisk though. Right. Yeah, this is around Fisk range. Let me see that interior defensive line situation. David Onyemata. Grady Jarrett. Yeah, Calais Campbell. This is absolutely Fisk range. Yeah, it is. I'm going to go Braden Fisk here. Okay. I think this is a perfect pick. Number one for interior defensive lineman in the 40, in the vert, and in the broad. He went nuclear. Nuclear. I think I think Raheem Morris is going to love it, especially coming from the Rams where they were able to see what a fantastic, quick one-gap penetrator in Aaron Donald does. Not saying Braden Fisk and Aaron Donald. You can't clip me. You can't <laughs> nice try. Not internet. on my own show. Nice try, nice internet. Try. On my own show. All right. Raiders. Raiders have some free agents on the right side of their offensive line. They could use some help in the secondary. Could theoretically take Bo Nix here. Mm. 
theoretically. Theoretically. I am going to take Christian Haynes in this spot. My boy. Antonio Pierce. Let's go. Pierce wants to line up and punch you in the mouth and be a downhill running Let's football go. team. Christian Haynes. This is my dude. I love Christian He Haynes. is awesome. Yes. Great senior bowl. I think he's got two year, two, shoot, three great seasons at tape. Yep. I think he's super underrated. All right, so for the Saints, we have them getting Talize Fuaga in the first round. A defensive line probably is now what they're going to look for. Oh, Adiza Isaac, I think it makes a ton of sense for them. They got Cam. Yeah. They got Cam Jordan. Peyton Turner, Carl Granderson. Granderson was obviously fantastic this past year. Right. Yeah, I think they'd need an interior guy too. Oh, is this where Chiva Andre Sweat comes off the board? They took Brazil last year. I know, but you, you know Sweat's different. You know? Right, right. Like Sweat's a one sweat's like a one of one player. Right. They just have a lot of guys in that group. Unless they make some cuts. It's definitely possible. Like Nathan Shepard is there. Colin Saunders is there. I know Cam Jordan plays on the end. Brzee. It's not crazy at all. I think that's where I'm going. Okay. Mm, yeah, that's where I'm going. I'm going to Vondre Sweat. Sweat off the board to the Saints at 45. 45. Yeah. The Colts at 46. So we had the Colts. Did we have them take Bowers? Yes, in the first round. That's good living. So we had them take Bowers. Bonex is falling way too far, by the way. We've gone too far. Uh, Don't do that to me. Mm. Not on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> it's furious. You can do it to me on any other show. He's, he's furious. Not on my own show. He's furious. All right. Corner here. I kind of like the idea. Man, I, I like Sandra still here if Kenny Moore leaves in free agency. By the way, we just got a breaking news text. The Denver Broncos have yes. informed quarterback Russell Wilson that he will be released when the new league year begins on March 13th. They even released a statement. Saying what? Yeah, thanks, but L see you later. L LMAO. Yeah. <laughs> worst, trade in, worst trade in our franchise's history. I mean, it's hold oh. on. It's not it's not the worst trade in Broncos history. Worst trade of all time. It's the worst trade of all time. I agree. Of all time. I agree. Of all time. I agree. To it's trade the really picks bad. that they did for Russell Wilson and now to take on the dead cap that they're going to take on to cut him. It's really bad. It's a problem. It's the worst trade of all time. It's problematic. It's problematic. Denver Bronco fans, welcome. Welcome to the New York to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. You are. You are a part of the pod. You are an addict. All right, who's you taking here for the Colts? It's not easy. <laughs> it's really hard for the Colts. Because uh, I think they're going to find something. Corner. They're going to get something done with Pittman. It has Dude, to be. They really need a slot. Sitting man. right there. What? Who? You, wait, did you say slot? Yeah. Kenny Moore's brother, a free if you, agent. Brother, if you, if you don't take I'm Mike taking, Sanders I'm still. taking Sanders still. I think he's awesome. Yeah, you should. He's yeah. a top 50. He's going top 50. Hell yeah. He's a top 50 player. Yeah, Sanders still, 46. He's a top 50 player, 100%. Uh, Bonex is going to the Patriots here. Forty seven. I don't even care. Yeah, I know. This is fine. Yeah, I, I don't even care who they who who did they who did they pick before? I don't even know. Doesn't Blake Neighbors is six. Graham Barton. They're doing good. And Bonex. They're doing good. This is a good draft for New England. It's a good draft. Good draft. Forty eight Jacksonville. You had them go Olu Fashanu at seventeen. I did. So now I think they need a corner or a wide receiver here. I'm going to take Lad McConkey. Oh, yeah. Give me a hell yeah, brother. <laughs> hell, yeah. hell yeah, brother. There we go. Man. Men will look at this and just say hell yeah. Yeah, they really will. <laughs> they love this one. They love it. Trevor Lawrence, he's going to, Lad McConkey's going to walk in the room. Trevor Lawrence is just going to say hell yeah. And they're going to yeah. just get to work. All You're right, up with the Bengals of 49. 150 targets. All right, so the Bengals, <laughs> uh, who do we have them take in the first round? Amarius Mims. Oh, that's such a, a Bengals slot. It's perfect. That's pretty good. Have him step in right for Jonah Williams, the right tackle. 
Uh, what do we got in tier defensive tack? Mm. I, I've looked down this well. It got scary quick. Well, it just, it, it's not that it gets scary. It's not full of the beef. It's all he, and, and that's the thing. Is that I like Ruka Roro, and, right. I, and I like Brandon Dorless. Me too. I, think I like Michael two. Hall, but you, it's just a different kind of player. It is a different kind of player. Oh, Jutavian Sanders is here. Yep, dub. Immediate dub. Amarius Mims and Jutavian oh, Sanders. Oh, yeah, wow. That took me a second for it to click what team we were talking about. What a sick haul for the That's Bengals. a really good haul. In awe at the size of this dub. Yes. We will We will stare at this dub. Massive dub, boss man. Oh, man. Eagles at 50. My so guy you, froze. You Cooper DeGene. Who, me? No, it's just it's a Snapchat meme. We were on a Snapchat <laughs> meme kick. You ever see the My Guy froze? He hasn't moved. Oh, it's all time. All right. <laughs> Keep it moving. All right. Now I'm Googling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like, my, my guy, guy froze. He hasn't moved. He hasn't moved in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so usable all the time. <laughs> the, the Eagles at 50. The Eagles in the first round took Cooper DeGene to help out their mm-hmm. secondary. Mm-hmm. Now at 50. Everybody's just going to scream collectively how he doesn't care about linebacker. Do it. I'm going to take a linebacker. Good. The question is, I'm really torn here. Peyton no, Wilson, Junior Colton, be. Edron Cooper. No, you shouldn't. Be you think it's Peyton Wilson? Yeah, not even close. All right, let's go Peyton Wilson, even though I do like Junior Colson better. That's yeah, it's fine. He's, he's Rams right. back on the clock at 51. Uh, who do we have? In I think Jared right? Verse, which is wild. No, Dallas, Dallas, Turner. Turner. Dallas Turner. All right, so they got the edge rusher. And now they're going to go another edge rusher. No, okay. I mean, it's not crazy. Ray oh, Straw's Jordan, there. Jordan Morgan, though. Oh, nice. Real good. It's pick. a big fall for Morgan. Yeah. He hasn't had the, the greatest. He had a really good 10 yard split. But I thought the senior bowl, I was like, man, I really like this guy. He doesn't look like himself here. Right, right. He, and that's that the was, problem. I was like, damn, I like Jordan Morgan a lot. Maybe it's just a bad week, but I thought he was going, I thought he was going top 35. Now I see him more realistically around here. Yeah. Okay, you doing it? I think. Hold on, coward. Because Rake Straw is here, right. and I think they're gonna love Rake Lassiter. Straw. Yeah, I think they'll love Lassiter too. I'm. I'll go Morgan. I'm gonna lean Morgan, but those two corners definitely on the board. Good thing we got another round. Hold on, the round. <laughs> Fifty-two. The Steelers are on the clock. Yeah, I had the Steelers taking Nate Wiggins at twenty. Yep. So it's good to get some corner help. You really, really love to see it. Let's look at what's going on with interior O line. Eh. No. Is interior O line really that bad? I just don't want to. At 52, I didn't love the value. Oh. I'm going to take Junior Colson here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he just your, he runs around, guy. makes plays, sideline to sideline, great leader, big time Mike Tomlin kind of guy, DNA wise. Colson at 52. Championship yeah. DNA. I think the Dolphins would draft Keon Coleman here. Has Mike McDaniel ever even talked to a player that doesn't run 4-3? That's a good point. Like is, is Keon Coleman on their scouting list? I don't understand the 40-yard dash, okay? I, I don't we get talked, it. We had this conversation when it we did the It doesn't make any sense. He is build-up speed. He is not out-of-the-gate speed. The same thing happened to a, a different extent with Traylon Burks. Everybody thought Traylon Burks was going to run like a 4-3, and his speed is build-up. It's not fly out of the gate, which when you bring that up, it does give you some concern. All right, so Tez Walker at 53. <laughs> um, honestly, they could go O-line again. They could. I mean, they they should. <laughs> they really... Uh, they did re- aren't really they releasing play. Xavier and Howard, or did they officially release him already? Either way, he's I not going to be on the team. I think, they, I think they already released him. Another corner? They drafted Cam Smith last year. Right, and I really liked Cam, and I think Is he had he a like good in summer. I thought he had a really good summer, and then he didn't play? Yeah, but here's the thing about Ennis Strikeshaw Jr. He didn't run well. No, I, this was not a good week for him. 
they also are going to be down both their pass rushers to start the season. Yeah, both. And they're letting Christian Wilkins probably walk. That front seven is just that bleeding. Is that is tough. As well. Probably. Probably. Yeah, let's go Chris Braswell. I'm glad we talked through that. Yeah, that was that's long. why we're friends. They're therapeutic. Eagles at 54. Again, they just picked at 50. <laughs> Another linebacker. Another <laughs> linebacker, because we don't care about how he thinks. Okay. Hmm. DeGene, Peyton Wilson. I actually love this haul. Yeah, they're I mean, they're cleaning up as the Eagles do. As the Eagles do. This is kind of a F you pick like they can really do whatever they want, which is rare to say in the top 60 of the draft. Am I nuts? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I, I mean, I, I agree They're They can really do whatever they want here and it doesn't they matter. Edge. I was going to say, is it depth? Is it edge depth here? Are we going with a bunch uh, of Cox is a sneaky free agent? Yeah. They have Nolan Smith as their edge three, technically. Don't, don't they have um, Caden Ellis's brother? Yeah, or the, did they? the one that's 360 pounds. Jonah Ellis's brother. Jonah Ellis, sorry, sorry. Isn't it Noah? Noah, Noah is on the Eagles. He is yes, 346. He is, he is quite yes. the lad. Reunite the brothers. No, I don't know. I just think they no, have they that are, guy, Nolan are, Smith. No, they already have Nolan Smith. Right. You know? I yeah. think if Fletcher's getting to the end here, I'm going to take kidding at the end of playing football for the eagles all right thank you do not clip me do not ruin me <laughs> do not ruin me do not ruin one. me i think i'm gonna take ruka row 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 here all right all right it's yeah. all pick. rotational like d-line good length that kind of guy browns at 55 i no troll i'm gonna take tez walker here why why is it a troll no, because I kind of was like joking around about oh. it before with the Dolphins just taking team speed. But like, no troll. He's I think that Tez Walker's as long as he remembers to catch football, like this is quite literally their perfect pick. I think at fifty five. As long as he remembers to catch the ball, it is important for playing wide receiver, and he didn't really do so at the at the Senior Bowl, which bothered me. But yeah, that wasn't great. Cowboys. Ooh. Oh, son of a bitch! I got the Packers next. <laughs> you keep getting <laughs> <laughs> the no, absolute I, I, no, 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 no. I know who I'm going to pick now. Good, and you've it's had the be time. A sick haul. Okay. Cowboys at 56. They are absolutely the team that does not care and takes Keon Coleman. Okay, 100. All right, so you taking Keon? S yeah, red zone wide receiver for Dallas at 56. Uh, Good RB1 luck, comes, Packers. RB1 comes off the board here with the Packers. Jonathan Brooks, baby. He's the perfect complement to Aaron Jones. He's that same style. They can play the same type of carries. They tried to do the different personalities or the different you know carries with yeah. A.J. Dillon being such a different running back from Aaron Jones, and it just didn't work. They just need another talented running back. Jonathan Brooks absolutely is that. So as Aaron Jones gets older, further into that contract, Brooks can take over. So you can ease him into this year as the ACL recovers. He can take over his RB1 in the near future. This one's easy. Boom. There you go. If Packers fans yell at me for that one, I got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you right here. <laughs> and with that, the Bucks are on the clock at 58. True. They are. They took Leatu Latu. Good. I was pretty confident they'd be able to get guard help here. And... I was right because I'm taking Dominic Pooney here from Kansas. Oh, they have gotten nice. their guard help. Nice. A big brawler for that interior. Okay. So the Texans are up at 59. Who do we have them taking? You got Jared Verse. Jared Verse. God, what a yeah, steal. That's a, yeah, that's a, if they lose Grenard and replace him with Verse, it's like, wow. Man, I'm good at this. Yeah, right. That's exactly what that feels like. Uh, <laughs> um,. Did they, would they take Adrian Cooper? Yes. He fits the scheme. Think of D'Amico coming from San Francisco. Adrian Cooper's favorite player, obsessed with Fred Warner. Obsessed with Fred Warner. And when you watch mm. him play, you're like, he wants to be Fred Warner the way he's used. Mm. We're going Adrian Cooper. The Bills on the clock at 60. I had them go wide receiver with Adonai Mitchell at 28. Assume Gabe Davis leaves in free agency. 
Yep. This is a team that could really use some depth on defense with all the injuries they dealt with last year. D line, yeah, especially. yeah. The, the D line. I mean, Von Miller. It's it's not looking good when he came back from injury. I'm gonna go with Jonah Ellis in this spot over Adiza Isaac. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Hater. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jonah Ellis. No. I, yeah. I, great hand placement. Really did you good. did you get to talk to I Ellis? Did. I, re- no. I really liked him. He was he was awesome, even just from the podium session. He's so a really uh, great dude to talk to, and just so locked in. Coming from that football family, dad played for a long time. All the brothers play. Like it's his adjustment will not be difficult. No, he will not. Um, man, okay, so Lions are up now. I love the Javon Bowler personality pick for them more, but they already have Brian Branch and they got the safeties figured out. You know what you're doing here. I mean, well, I was, is Kamari Lasseter not I built? Gonna, for no, I was going to take Kamari Lasseter. Yeah, 100%. Hey, dude, dude, give me some time. Sorry, right? I, I, did, I did. I really did. You know, he, he thought I was going to blow it. I, yeah, I dragged my feet all over your couch on that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm and sorry. I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, all right, so Kamari Lasseter going 61. They took Darius Robinson in the first round. So Darius Robinson and Kamari Lasseter for the Lions. All right, the Ravens, I had them take Chris Jenkins at 62. I like wide receiver here a lot. I'm going to go with Jalen Polk. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a guy. He he feels like a Raven. That's a guy that will be Lamar's safety blanket. He is built differently, uh, his mindset. So, Polk. Uh, You know, I think the Ennis Rakestraw Jr. slide stops here. Um I think we considered him a first round pick. I don't think he tested very well, but I, I, I love the footwork. I like the tape. Dude's not afraid to come up and tackle. Yeah, and this is outside the top 60 now. Yeah, so I like Ray Shaw Jr. here. So Ray Shaw coming off the board at, uh, at 63 to the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Our pace is unbelievable right now. All right, the Chiefs at 64. I'm going with Patrick Paul. He's a guy that knows how to use his length. The most interesting player I think I talked to at the Combine. Really? Yeah, he lived in Nigeria for two and a half years when he was a kid. I believe his grandfather was the president. I forget what. He was in politics. Patrick Paul's dream job after football is to be in politics. He wants to rebuild the entire infrastructure over there. He, I mean, he is just, that dude is different. And everything he says, you believe him. But I also back to the football aspect, he's been training in boxing for a while and it really taught him how to use his length as a tackle. He's very into martial arts, very, very into martial arts, has been training specifically in boxing, though, and uh, really good conversation that if anyone wants to watch NFL on NBC YouTube channel, love Patrick. Love, love the plug. All right. We're getting into round three now. Just for everybody on YouTube, I am slowly scrolling round two. So you guys can see all the selections that we had from round two. Round three, Connor, 15 seconds or less. Can I feed Gracie? Yes. This will take me three minutes. I just got to heat up her food. Okay. All right. Ryan, I'm, I'm actually, sorry. We were, I'm I know go, we're, I'm actually, I'm actually going to go feed Marvel yes, as well. Cause so, then we don't okay. have to, then we don't have to rush round three as much as I would have needed to. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Go do that. I'll, I'll come back too. Gracie. Okay, third round now. So, fifteen second shot clock for these picks. We'll be, we'll, 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 I, I don't know if fifteen seconds is realistic because we've got to kind of recap who teams have picked. But uh, we got the Carolina Panthers on the board at sixty five. I had them taking Ricky Pearsall top of the second round. I'm actually going to go with Marshawn Neeland here for them at number sixty five. The edge rusher from Western Michigan, really nice uh, Senior Bowl, uh, really nice combine. I think you know the. the 40, the vertical, the broad, not top of his class, but he was number one for all defensive ends uh, in the agility drills, and that's at 267 pounds. So I think that he's going to go sometime probably on, probably in the second round, but now that he's in here at the third round, then we're, we're taking him here. All right, the Cardinals have cleaned up in this draft. They have taken Marvin Harrison Jr., Johnny Newton, uh, and Kool-Aid McKinstry so far. So I'd like to get them some help on the offensive line in this spot. I'm going to go with, man, they're tricky because I want to make sure I I know they need a tackle technically or could take a tackle technically. I like Blake Fisher. I was going to say, I don't know. The tape is good for Blake Fisher. I like Christian Jones too. I know he's a four year starter. I think 
Uh, he is. Um, I'm going to go with Blake Fisher in this spot. Okay. All right. Washington at 67. Jaden Daniels, Zach Frazier, uh, Chop Robinson. Um, man, do they have a nickel corner? Because if they don't, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna take Javon Bullard very very easily. Right. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess they drafted Quan Martin, who could be a safety, but they got him a nickel. Man, it's probably just best player available here at this point. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> if I take Jermaine Burton, they're gonna have like the smallest wide receiver room in the league, but <laughs> but they're they all really care. good receivers. Right. I think they're all really good receivers. So um yeah, I'm gonna take Jermaine Burton. <laughs> all right, Burton off the board. Wait, wait, wait. Did you click yet? Nope. Close. Let's go Kyrie Jackson. Kyrie Jackson. Okay. The corner from Morgan. Okay, so uh, New England on the clock. They've taken Malik Neighbors, Graham Barton, and Bo Nix. I'm going with Adiza Isaac. They need pass rush depth. They need pass rushers that can play. Isaac is really good value in round three. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. So we've got the Chargers up on the board now. Quinnon Mitchell, Roman Wilson in hand. Man, who do we got along the defensive line? I mean, I, I, they need they need somebody out here. Uh, Braylon Trice could be nice for him. Right. Uh, Gabriel Murphy, I think, could also be pretty nice right. for him. Ooh. I wonder if Austin Booker... I wonder what the perception of Austin Booker is going to be now. What did you say? Because of his testing at the Combine? Yeah, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. Compared to, I think, yeah. what people thought that it was going to be. Right. And, and he, he looked good at Senior Bowl. Yeah, I think I thought he looked a lot better at Senior Bowl. Um, Lean and Trice... Defensive tackle, anybody else there? I like. I think they'll like Brandon Dorless too. No, nah, I'm going to go Braylon Trice here. I'm taking Trace the edge rusher. I'll keep Milwaukee. the pass rush trend going for the Giants in this spot. Um, I think because I think they need edge help. I wonder if they go out and get that in free agency, but we don't know that yet. I'm going to go with Gabe Murphy in this spot. My man. Yeah, for the Giants. My this, man. This is All right, good so for them to target that. Cardinals have Marvin Harrison Jr., Johnny Newton, um, cool Kool-Aid McKinstry, Blake Fisher. I think I'd go Jaden Hicks next. This is this this might be like the greatest draft of all time. <laughs> Just saying. They have they have Jalen Thompson. Man, they need outside corner. Can Garrett start at outside corner? I feel like you can. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if there's another because they got Kool-Aid now. So Garrett can start on outside. They have Keytro Clark as well. I'm I'm taking Javon Bullard. I'm do, I'm doing it. I was gonna he, say he could, he, he could potentially play slot for you, or he could play safety. This is and this is a hell of a haul. Yeah, they, they the just Cardinals. keep hitting on BPA over and over yes. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really, really do. All right, Jets. Jets at seventy two. This is gonna be Xavier Leggett. They they need a wide receiver really badly. Leggett's got a big frame. He's dangerous with the ball in his hands. I like him a lot more in this range than when he was getting round one talk, obviously. I think you have to do some things to scheme him open. But I think with Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson in this offense, this is a pretty good landing spot for Leggett. And they need to get bigger at the position. He plays stronger. Obviously not the biggest dude, but he definitely plays stronger. He's 6'1", but really a 224. Yeah, he's, he's he's stacked. He's yeah, he is definitely stacked. I think I'm going to go Brandon Dorless here for the Lions at 73. Just too good of a defense. I know they took Darius Robinson for some versatility there, but I I just think that Brandon Dorless is too good of a player. Unless I'm like me really like really forgetting a need. Did we, get, did we get them a corner yet? I thought we did. I thought we did. Yeah, I gave them Kamari. Yeah, they got Kamari. Yeah, they got Kamari. Um, oh man, Brandon Rice too. I think they could use him. Hmm. Jonah Jackson's a free agent. Uh, Vitae is also a free agent. Graham Glasgow is a free agent. Actually, I should pick a guard. I'm gonna go Christian Mahogany here. We're doing we're doing Mahogany to the uh, to the Detroit Lions. Absolute ass kicker on the O line. He really fits their DNA. He really does. And this is yeah. this is right in his range. I think if you want to run downhill and you have Mahogany as one of your blockers, you're living right. And they need depth there. The Falcons at 74, they've taken Brian Thomas Jr. 
in the first round, and then they got Braden Fisk in the second round. So they are yep. they got two elite athletes, elite athletes yep. at that spot. I know they still need some edge help. Man, I have some real questions about Booker after that combine, but if he can improve a little bit at his pro day, there's a lot to like with him. Mm-hmm. I think this is the right spot for him. I think so, too. Because, wait, who do, who do we pick for him? Brian Thomas Jr. and Brayden Fisk? Yeah. yeah. I think he'd probably take Austin Booker here. All right, Austin Booker at 74. The Chicago Bears. They got Caleb Williams. They got Byron Murphy the second. Man, I feel like Brandon Rice goes next out of the receivers. It's yeah, my, Burton, my Burton too. Yeah, but I, I know think Brandon looking, Rice. Right, I, I, you know me, like I love, I love Jermaine Burton, but I think Brandon Rice goes in front of him. Let's go, Brandon Rice here to the uh, to the Chicago Bears at seventy five. Okay, so Rice off the board, Get some size at wide receiver. The Broncos they took Michael Penix in the first round. I wonder if they look to trade Cortland Sutton this offseason. I feel like both wide receivers were on the block. Lloyd Cushenberry, a free agent. I'm going to go with Cedric Von Prahn. Okay. Right here. Get your- you say his name so fancy. That Von might be exactly Prahn. Yeah, it might be exactly how you're supposed to say it, but I Instead mean of, you just you, I don't like Van Pran. But if it is Van Pran, I will switch. I think that's I think that's what it uh, is. But Von Prahn. My, I think it's maybe a lot more. You're, you're like Disney character. <laughs> it up, you know, so. sometimes I just practice my voiceovers on this show without actually saying it. Sneak one in every um, now and then. Raiders are up. Taron Arnold and um, Christian Haynes were their two picks. Man, they're, you want to be a tough football before. team. <laughs> Those two picks right there. Yeah, man. Um, they because w- what's Josh Jacobs situation, right? They're not going to He's going to get him. to the market and they'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if he's back. They have Braylon Allen time. <laughs> They have Zeus White. Well, no, if anybody, it's going to be um, Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright, yeah, get some speed. They do need offensive line still. They need more than just one. They need pick. a tackle if they lose, um, you know, a couple guy. Okay, a couple guys are right tackle hitting free agent. Yeah, Brandon Parker, Illuminor, Illuminor. free agent. Uh, man, they need interior defensive line. Hey, maybe I'll go Michael Hall here. It's probably the way to do it. Dorless is still there. Oh, yeah, Dorless is still there. But wouldn't you use Dorless how you're going to use Tyree? <laughs> right? Theoretically? Look, brother, you know what I, you know know. What I think. You're not you're counting not, on him for anything. About Tyree Wilson. Yeah, I know. Um, Man, is there... A linebacker, man. There's just, I feel like this board did not fall really well for the Raiders' needs. Yeah, we're getting de- deeper in the draft than we've ever been. I'm going Mason McCormick. Whoa, I think you, I think you can play center or guard. That was a, that was not what I was ready for. Yeah, let's go two ass kickers. You got you yep. got Christian Haynes. You got Mason McCormick. Give me those two dudes. Seattle at 78. I'm going to take Jaden Hicks. They're going to cut Jamal Adams. Nice. Yeah, I like Hicks nice. a lot. I mean, obviously, local ish. Don't forget the travel fees. Dude, depth and safety. I can, can never forget the travel it's fees. It's not as local as actual Washington U, but still. Um, this one's actually pretty easy for me. For the Atlanta Falcons, Jermaine Burton's still yeah. on the board, and I think he'd be fantastic for him. You know, you're basically flipping a coin, which who's the NFL going to be higher on Jermaine Burton or Jalen McMillan? I think that he's uh, fantastic for either of them. I guess Malachi Corley as well. I'm not as high on Corley. I think the NFL might be a little bit higher on him, but. I like Burton. I'm going to go Burton here at 79. The Bengals, Amarius Mims and Jatavian Sanders. That is, Sick. I mean, that is just absolutely insane. Completely insane. I'm going to take Brandon Doorless in this spot. Get them another piece. You can move up and down the line of scrimmage for the D line. Yep. No, I, I do like that. I do like that. He's not like the Tavondre sweat that some people envision for them, but he's a really good player. Yep. Uh, Seahawks, Troy Font now. Do they have another one? Yeah, I just picked for them, Jaden Hicks. But okay, outside of Jaden Hicks, I didn't remember. I couldn't remember if they had another. In the one. second but, round, no, because they traded it for Leonard Williams, right? So they have this pick yeah. here. What edge rusher could they pick? Solomon. What do we got along the edge? Oh, Mo Kamara. 
Mm, I don't really love edge rushers here. Wide receivers for now. Man, who? I'm burning the shot clock here, but I guess they do need more interior offensive line picks. They have Old Opatimi. They uh, might have found something in Anthony Bradford last draft, by the way. Yeah. Oh, they need linebacker. Right. Jeremiah Trotter Jr.? Hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. we did have all the we did have the big three come off the board already. Okay, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'll go Trotter Jr. Right. here for the Seahawks at eighty-one. The Colts at eighty-two. They have taken Brock Bowers, Mike Sandra no. still. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? I think so. That's it. Okay. Man, I really wanted interior D line depth for them, especially if they lose Grover Stewart. I don't hate Dwayne Carter here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dwayne Carter from Duke. They need interior D-line depth. All right. Dwayne Carter off the board. Rams. You have been single-handedly rebuilding the restocking the Rams on this show. They've got um, Dallas Turner. They've got Jordan Morgan. And now I think I'm going to give him Kalen Bullock. I knew you were going to go that route. Yeah, you know what? Don't tell me yeah. what you know about me. All right, right? for that reason, you love guys that that reason, I'm not taking him. You love I'm guys not that don't him. tackle. All right, I'm not taking him. All right, maybe I am. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you know what? I'm throwing a curveball. I'm throwing a curveball. Okay. Here. I've never hit one in my life, so throw it away. Spencer Rattler. I like this a lot. Think about it. You put your thinking cap on for this one. Think about it. All right. You started off roasting me in this pick. Yeah, now but, you're but I agreeing. bullied you into a better pick. It's basically my dating life, right? <laughs> started off roasting me. Now we agree on something. Just ask Alyssa. That's how it went. 84. Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. The Steelers here. I know I took a linebacker for them in the second round. Junior Colson and Nate mm-hmm. Wiggins. Mm-hmm. So they have been loading up on the, de- good ball on the defense. Some good, some good, good ball, ball players. players. Man, they got to get a veteran quarterback, right? Like we're doing this, assuming that they got a veteran. Probably Justin Fields. Sure. Fine. I just want to make sure I don't have to take Michael Pratt here. <laughs> fine. Just making sure I don't have to take Michael Pratt in this spot. <laughs> just fine if I do. Could use some depth at safety. I'm going to take Cam Kinchins. Cam can play any role you need him to. I think Cam's now underrated. Yeah, we went, ah. we went, we did, we did the thing. I mean, the the the, the combine wasn't great because what did he run? He wasn't great. Yeah, I think in the four sixes. Yeah, it wasn't great. But we have done the full thing. Oh yeah, it wasn't great. Damn, the two Miami safeties were the slowest dudes. Well, I mean, Williams is the size of is bigger than half the league at linebacker. That's true. So you went Kinchins, right? Yep. All right, we got Houston at eighty-five. I had them taking Jared Verse and then Edgerin Cooper. And I think I'm going to take Jalen McMillan now. Okay. Yes, we're going Jalen McMillan. Good football player. Good ball player. All right, the How Browns on the Steve? clock. They went Tez Walker. That was easy. Is that all they've done? Yeah, because they only right. had one pick. They had 55. Another team that could use D-line help, linebacker help. I'm thinking either Tommy Eichenberg here or, oh man, you know what? I kind of like keeping Michael Hall around. Yeah. McKinley Jackson, I thought he'd be better this year. I didn't love his stuff. I didn't, the I didn't either, but I thought he'd be better. I mean, I, some people thought he'd be a first rounder and you and I were like, eh, no, but we're in the third round and we were not even considering him. Yeah. I'll go Michael Hall Jr. here, interior pass rusher. All right. I think that's a pretty, pretty solid. Sorry, who did you take so for the, the Texans again? Jalen McCown. Jalen McCown. Cool. Um, for the Dallas Cowboys, they went JC Latham in the first round, Keon Coleman in the second round. Just hitting some absolute right. homers. Biotish is oh. going to walk in free agency, but I don't know if there's a plug and play center in the third. 
Bo Limmer. Bo Limmer's the next guy. He'd been good. Yeah. He'd been good. Yeah. Arkansas, you know, Jerry's like, yep, we'll take him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you found something. They also have no running back options right now, and Jalen Wright would be immediately. They're going to get Derrick Henry. Right? Jesus Christ. Right? All right, now that you said it, now I'm not going to get in the way of it, so I'm going to go Bo Limmer. I mean, we all think it would be awesome. I'm going Limmer at 87. All right, my worst. Good, you're up for the Packers. My worst nightmare, I'm picking for the Packers. That's how that feels. I hate it. I really do. You had them take Jonathan Brooks, right? So I can't even take Jalen right here. Yep. That's great. Get wrecked, nerd. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) This sucks. Picking for the Packers sucks. Uh, I'm going to take Sione Vaki. Oh, yeah. Did I break the system? Well, I gave them Tyler Newbin first round. Does it change your answer at all? It doesn't have to. They're missing like three. I don't think so. I feel like they need two safeties. Okay. And Vaki can do a lot of different things. He's going to be a great special team player out of the gate. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. No, they need. You got, you got to chat with him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's great energy. Yeah, like intensity. really great energy, but make no mistake, that dude wants to play defense. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. You're right. Yeah. All right. So for the Bucks, Latu Latu in the first round, um, Dominic Pooney in the oh, second God. round. I call me Jason Light. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> easy now. <laughs> um, so let's see, what else do we have here? What's the next? Uh, oh, Is this the Cade Stover pick? Oh, it could be. <laughs> it could be the Cade Stover pick. Mm. He has to be in the mock draft. I don't want to no. get beat up. Hold on. That's true. Yeah. I actually think this might be Andrew Phillips here. Man coverage corner. Outside dude. Tested really well. Had a really nice senior bowl. That's a very Todd Bowles pick. He's gonna be it's gonna be a Todd yeah, Bowles type. Very man. Todd Bowles corner. I'm going Andrew Phillips. Cool. All right, Arizona. <laughs> I thought you were just done there. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Arizona, uh, you've heard it a million times. They got Marvin Harrison Jr., Johnny Newton, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Javon Bullard, Blake Fisher. I mean, good God, this draft. It's pretty sick. This draft's insane. You know what I'm about to do? That Are you about to do it to him? I'm about to do that to him. I'm taking Michael Pratt. In the spot. Oh, you need a you need a legit backup quarterback here. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. I don't hate it. Right. I don't hate it. Kyler gets banged up. Clayton Toon. I don't know if anyone wants to watch Clayton Toon again next year. No, Sorry, Clayton. No. Toon. That was tough. No, it's it's Michael Pratt time. The Green Bay Packers. Oh, OK, how many picks does this team have? Too many. Too many, brother. Too many. It's a nightmare. It's my never ending. It's ridiculous. Packers you fans, we do six love of them. <laughs> I know. All right, so I picked Tyler Newbin, Kieran Amagaji, uh, Jonathan Brooks, Sion Vaki. I'm. Hmm. Ooh, I was gonna do Leonard Taylor, but. I don't know if he goes in the third round mm-hmm. even. Matt Gonclaves from Pittsburgh. I like him too. Oh, shoot. Where did the depth chart go for Green Bay? I had it up. I can't. The wide receiver, they're so, they're so young. I know. <laughs> They have so many guys. Oh, I got it. Okay. I got the perfect pick. Perfect. You ready for the it? Perfect pick. Yes. Okay. Bo Melton's already on this team. Oh, man. You're going with Max. We are reuniting the brothers. Yeah. Yep. Max, good depth. Can play outside. Yep. Can play inside. He's got the athleticism to do it. No troll. This is actually a good pick. Hell yeah, it is. Good job, Trev. Thanks, Trev. Very nicely done. The Lions at 92. You've had them take Darius Robinson in the first round. Mm-hmm. Then Kamari Lasseter in the second. Mm-hmm. Very Dan Campbell draft. Christian Mahogany in the third. 
Damn, very Dan Campbell draft. Yes, a very Man Campbell draft. <laughs> man Campbell. Very Man Campbell draft. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I can go corner again. All right. No, I don't love the board. I changed my mind instantly. <laughs> I'm not allowed to do it. I'm going to take Zach Zinter here and double up on interior O-line. Oh, you think the Zinter goes third round? It, it right. might be a little early. Double I don't know, though. Move. His tape was really good for a guy that's still on the board here. Cooper B. Ravens. Cooper BB just feels a little small for them. Yeah, well, I mean, right? they would draft him yeah. somewhere. Uh, maybe day three. Though. I'll go Zinter. A Baltimore Ravens here. They went with Chris Jenkins Jr. at the top. Jalen Polk was their next pick. I'm going Renardo Green, the cornerback from Florida State. Really good performance underrated. at the Shrine Bowl. Um, really good performance, I think, this past year. Man coverage type of point at the wide receiver. Don't let him catch the football type of a player. I think he's a, he's a Baltimore Raven, if you will. So uh, that puts you on the clock with the Niners. You ready for, for me to do it to him? <laughs> sure. What do, we, <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? Malachi Corley. We know each other. Like, just too well at this point. Let's go, baby! When Debo Samuel gets hurt, <laughs> you bring in Malachi Corley, who's maybe 20% Debo Samuel, but you know what? That's better than not having any solution. All right, Malachi Corley to the Niners at 94. Chiefs are up now at 95. Who'd you have them taking? Xavier Patrick Worthy. Paul. Oh, yeah, Xavier Worthy. Good God. And then Patrick... <laughs> And then Patrick Paul. Um, they got the, you know, one of the lightest players and then one of the, you know, one of the bigger players in the draft lengthwise. Yeah, I mean, Leonard Taylor would be objectively hilarious because if you worked out and the Chiefs got him at 95. Then everyone's just like, be, oh, shit, this is absolutely ridiculous. Right. You know what I'm doing? It. Leonard Taylor okay. at 95. Whatever. That's a very if Chiefs. Jones back, if Chris Jones comes back, he gets to play next to Chris Jones. Yeah, learn a thing or two. We're going Leonard. It Taylor. makes sense. I don't even know if he ends up being a day two pick, but this that was it's too funny to not pick. Compensatory picks. Jacksonville starts at 96. Hey. They got Olu Fashanu. Yep. They got Lad McConkey. Mm. Is that it? I think that's it. It appears that's it. Okay, Olu Fashanu, Lad McConkey. I gotta get a corner here. I'm going to go with Chris Abrams drain. Oh, okay. I think he, I think he can play inside and outside next level, preferably inside, preferably inside. Okay. They need corner right. depth. Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. We had Cooper DeGene in the first round. Mm, Peyton Wilson and Ruka Roro in the second round. We need a wide receiver, don't we? Kind of. need a wide receiver. on this One of those team. guys gets hurt. Who we got left? Jamari Thrash is there. He's good. Yeah, I think Thrash. Probably Javon the Baker. Here. I'm going Jamari Thrash. I like that pick. We're going Thrash here. Niners. They always have a compensatory pick here. Malachi <laughs> Corley went at 94. Again. <laughs> so we're going to take him again. <laughs> we're going to take him again. Just out of respect for the talent level. I really want to troll and, and take Jalen Wright here. Why is that a troll? Because they have Christian McCaffrey, but yeah, no. But Kyle does Elijah this Mitchell. every year. I have Elijah Mitchell. Don't do he it. He does do it not do every it. year. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. He does do it. But it year, would though. be really funny. It's an abomination. <laughs> it would be really funny. It's sick. It, it's some real sicko stuff. It is some real sicko shit. All right. Who is the O-lineman they took? I want to make sure we have that right. You have Guyton? Oh, man. They got yeah. Guyton. All right, I'm going yeah. Cooper Beebe here. Ooh. They got a tackle and a guard. Okay. His tape's good. I mean, yeah. His tape's good. Yeah. I, mean, I know yeah. you. He's your Tyree Wilson this year. No. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You hate him. No, 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 no. If you had 40 picks in the seventh round, you wouldn't take him. <laughs> it's not true it's not and he even tested a little bit better than i thought See? he was going to it. you doubted he did. him well, you I'm, doubted admitting him. It. I'm admitting it <laughs> he's probably gonna go up to pff board 
Okay. Are you happy? Yep. Uh, Bills, 99. A.D. Mitchell in the first round. Joan Ellis in the second round. Mm. They do kind of need safety. Huh? So they need secondary depth and potential starters. Both safeties got old. All their corners got hurt. Kyrie Elam has not been able to really become what they hoped. <sighs> okay, this is either this is either Cam Hart or Dadrian Taylor, Taylor Demerson. I'm gonna go DTD here. Okay. I just think he's a damn good football player, man. Loved what I saw from him at Shrine. Loved that he was flying in the 40 this past week in Indy. He's one of those Shrine guys. I have to watch him. Dude, he yeah. was awesome at Shrine. He was awesome. And his tape is re- and his Texas Tech grades for PFF uh, over the last three years, really solid. Really solid. I think he'd be a Buffalo Bill type of that type of guy. All right, the Rams. This is actually one of my favorite picks I've made in the draft. Tyke Smith. Yes. Who ran who also ran better than I thought he was going to in Which is about. really big. Really big. Tyke Smith is a dog in the slot, man. All right. So Washington, this is the last pick that we're making here. First a, first two hour show we ever did. Um I'm sure. Yeah, it might be. It might be. It might be. Jaden Dan- we went with Jaden Daniels at the top for Washington. Zach Frazier. Chop Robinson. Kyrie Jackson. And are you ready for this one? Okay. I'm doing this one so I don't beat get beat up. Blake Corum? No. Ooh. Cade Stover, baby. Get in the squad. We got you in the third round mock draft. They great actually move. need a tight end. Great I move. actually think that this is a uh, this is a great pick for them. So- 101 picks down. This is the first round here. You see that? Where's the full results? Full results. Boom. I'm going to scroll this very slowly. Connor? Talk to us about your experience. Give us your uh, give us your post game feelings right well, now. Well, I think there'll be guys that people are disappointed in make it in. Who I mean, it's guys that I really like, like Trey Benson. I don't think we had come off the board. No, this Blake happens. Corm didn't come off the board either. Right, Blake Corm didn't. Jalen Wright didn't. This running back class is going to be sitting around a bit, and it's not that those guys won't go in the first three, but this is a scenario of other positions being valued, even though they're really, really good players. I think what I loved about this exercise was putting the entire packaged together for teams where Mm -hmm. they had you know a handful of these teams had three or four needs and we really went in trying to but when i pick for the bucks i'm like do i go o-line or do i just take layatu latu and i felt better about taking the pass rusher first because i thought i'd get some value in the second round i got dominic pooney so I, i think this exercise really helps you strategize better because you have to actually operate the way a gm would thinking of the whole draft rather than just maximizing one pick. So as much as this takes a while and we appreciate everybody, you know, listening in and it's 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 just so well worth it because I think it's the most realistic way to do an actual mock draft. Dude, these are so much fun. You know, we we already did a uh a two round mock draft uh earlier this year, but this is the first three round beast that we have had. Let us know what you thought about it, right? I mean, that's what I say at the end of every show, but I really mean it. There's a lot of pictures, a lot of suggestions, a lot of conversations that we would love for you guys to dive into. The best way to do that is in the YouTube comment section, youtube.com backslash at NFL Stock Exchange. Like we said, we'd love to have another episode hit 100K. The way that that actually happens is you guys firing off your takes, you know, getting in on the conversation helping the algorithm out for us. Like the video, comment on the video. That's the best way to do it. Um, And honestly, like, even outside of just the 100K episode goal. We love doing mock drafts. We jokingly say that we do it to, to, to feed our families because it gets a lot of views. But in all honesty, it brings us the most conversations too. You know, so many different people of so many different fan bases come in and tell us, man, I really like this pick that you guys made here. Or, hey, I, I totally did not like this pick. I would have gone this direction. And we have a little back and forth. It's a lot of fun. Get into the community, get into the conversation uh, with us and with our uh, our fellow addicts here. If you're audio only, you can obviously still hit us up and give us your thoughts on the mock draft as well at Tampa Bay Trey at Connor J Rogers on X slash Twitter and also Instagram. Connor, you got anything else before we get out of here? A ton of fun. Can't wait to listen back to this one because when we were doing it, there was times where you were explaining your pick, and I'm like, I gotta think 
with a team next. Who do we take? Right. <laughs> Who do we take in the first and second round? What do they need? Like, you don't want to be sitting here doing the oh god for four minutes. So, man, thank you for everybody for supporting these long, long shows because that's why we do it and and love it. And it's it's a ton of fun to see that this industry and space is so dedicated to the to the draft that people want third round mock drafts. It's freaking awesome. Despite this marathon of an episode, we will be with you later this week. Not sure exactly what day, what we will give you another episode coming this week because it's the final stretch of draft season, baby. I mean, we got the combine now in the rear view mirror. We got free agency coming up. Maybe we'll do a couple of episodes, one episode at least talking about um, some, some changes that might happen when it comes to free agency, but we'll give you coverage post free agency as well. But I mean, this is a final push. So like, like we talked about in the middle of the week episode last week. We know that we've kind of been all over the place with travel. We appreciate you guys dealing with this to kind of go to these events and give you this boots on the ground coverage there. We know that's kind of sacrificed a couple of episodes, but we're here, baby. We're locked in. We're ready to go all the way up until April. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. See you guys later this week.